uh, recording. Uh, go ahead. So uh, same with last Monday. Um, tell me about your uh, design process and how you can uh, reach your design and can, uh, any key features I want to design. Okay, and okay, that answer. Oh, okay, that. Okay. Um, so, good morning, sir, and everyone. Um, so, Lakbay, uh, the proposed Cebu North Bus Terminal, inspires to create a memorable public experience from what seems to be a mundane activity of commuting for local city dwellers and tourists alike. The goals of the design includes accessibility, control, and efficiency for passengers hailing from SMC Cebu or from Bayfront, and streamlines its internal circulation and the vehicular circulation so as not to be in conflict with the traffic flow in the peripheral road network, which I will be showing in the following slides. Mm -hmm. In relation to accessibility as a commuter myself, passenger safety is integrated carefully into the design through segregation of pedestrian and vehicle flow. Provision of feeder modes, the private vehicles and taxis, were integrated to segregate the circulation of boarding and alighting passengers to ensure a conflict-free circulation and facilitate seamless transfers in order to create the impression that the journey is continuous. It also caters to the circulation of PWDs, people carrying luggage, <laughs> pregnant women through proper provision of prompts in key access points of passengers. Lastly, it seeks to have a connection with nature through use of passive pooling strategies integrated in its facade through louvers, public squares, natural lightings, solar energy harvesting, and use of vege vegetation for noise abatement. The bus parking layout utilizes parallel parking. There is a separate flow for unloading base and loading base so as not to concentrate traffic in one single point. Facing major traffic in Caution Street and Sirius Mania Boulevard, a public square with vegetation serves as buffer from the traffic noise to improve noise abatement from the terminal building. The public square also serves as a contrast to the paved surfaces for cars in the city center and the visual screen from oncoming traffic that is directly visible from the terminal. This way, it creates a sense of seclusion from the bustle of the traffic. With the rectilinear form, the building has air pockets in the form of pocket gardens to permit airflow into the different mousing functions, uh, which I will discuss in the ground floor plan, and to strengthen its passive cooling strategies. With a wide open space unobstructed by dense high-rise buildings, the proposed bus terminal will harvest solar energy in and use the site location as leverage for this purpose. In addition to that, because of its site context and obstructed by dense high-rise buildings, this also permits harsh sun and heat to penetrate into the premises of the building. So large overhangs were used to um, ensure indoor temperature and brightness comfort. Uh, so this is my passenger flow diagram anchored on passenger safety, efficiency, and control. Mixing of different passenger types, boarding, and alighting is avoided through separate offloading bay flow and loading bay circulation. This way it prevents, uh, like I've mentioned, concentration on a single point, which makes the circulation seamless. So alighting passengers in red can safely exit through sidewalks to SMCT PUV or Vihar Terminal to uh, Juan Luna Avenue extension. And they can also likewise utilize the pickup base for private vehicles and taxis. Alighting passengers also have access to a nearby public restroom should they need it. Boarding passengers in green can arrive through use of drop-off bays for private vehicles or taxis, or they can use the sidewalks from SMC Cebu to the terminal entrance. Entrance is oriented to be close to the main points or where passengers may hail from, from the PUV and Vihar Terminal, or from SMCT parking lot. Boarding passengers hailing from Bayfront can also utilize the sidewalks. Uh, upon entering the premise, premises, the terminal building, they can wait by the passenger hall or wait directly or go through the bus platforms. Should boarding passengers decide to grab food before boarding the bus, 
in blue, they can access the concession space through a door and also come back through the same access point. Next is... And uh, before you go up, oh, <laughs> sorry, I raised oh, okay. my hand. Uh, question on the upper left, upper left, there's a eastern side. Is that private parking? What kind of parking is that? Um, employee on street parking, sir. Ah, okay, employee parking, okay. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Sige, padahal. Um, okay, sir. Okay. So the ingress and egress points are designed uh, for the bus, sir. It's designed to not be in conflict with the peripheral road network. In green, the bus enters from Sirio Osmeña Junior Boulevard so as to lessen traffic upon entry by leveraging its adjacency from its actual route to the destination. Upon entry, it stops to unload uh, alighting passengers to the offloading base and proceeds to idle park here in the bus platforms. And then, yes, and then in red, it exits through Cushing Street, considering it is a convenient exit for bus buses as it direct is it is in line with their destination route to North Cebu. So private vehicles in green may enter from Juan Luna Avenue extension or from Kaohsiung Street. Uh, for employees on street, on street parking provision of five slots with a PWD slot is given, they can then, uh, we also have a bike rack here, they can then cross through the crosswalk to their respective buildings. Since uh, I will be discussing this in the ground floor plan, since the bus stop area is here, the terminal stop area is here. So, yeah. And for private mm -hmm. vehicles it, or taxis, pick up can turn and stop by the here, sir, by the offloading base, which is uh, here's a pickup base nga adjacent to the offloading base. Then they can exit here to Kaohsiung Street or to Juan Luna Avenue. So pickup points are beneficial for picking up people with physical limitations, parents with children in tow, and especially for passengers carrying loads. Likewise, is done for kanang drop off points. Um, they are, this can also double as pickup points depending on the passengers also. Um, moving on to the ground floor plan, uh, as I've mentioned before, we have here two pocket gardens which will serve as air pockets to permit flow of air despite its rectilinear form. The building is subly divided into three massing, the bus stop area, this one, and then the terminal stop area. It can in show us there's game of connections are upper enough. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Um, so how does the park at pocket garden function? How does it permit uh airflow and how does it distribute uh natural ventilation uh in the adjacent spaces? Um since Kinisha sir ang bus stop area is uh utilized as a of passive cooling. And then, um, uh, mostly sa area students sir, kaya nag-utilize your passive cooling except sa kanang terminal staff area ng uh, air condition. Okay, then, so um, how does, ah, sorry, go ahead. Ah, uh, uh, yes, sir, kanang concert. Uh, so, ipakita lang na po ang roof transfer since open to below where man na siya there. So, uh, mo permit to siya airflow, sir. Ah, can, uh, how about this? How does, can you show me how the air moves like from the roof to the spaces? inside the building uh, actually sir wala ko kahit mo og illustrations ana ah, it's okay they describe lang so the air comes in from the roof and where does it go uh, ano yun, sir? section uh, ah. sir mo hmm. since open your mesh there is malusot ang air dere and then so so what the air goes down or does the air go up <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is something I just want to check. So uh, passive cooling, usually air goes up, uh, hot air goes up. So I'll just share my screen. So oh, um, stop sharing. Okay, you can just pin me. Uh, you can pin me there on Google uh, videos, uh, Google Meet. So usually it looks like this an airflow so it's because hot air goes up and cool air flows down 
So this is how air moves within your space. So why I ask this is uh, was because if you go to your floor plan, go to your floor plan now. Okay. Go to your pocket garden. Yes. So where is the opening for your pocket garden? Uh, open siya during a uh, access sir. So sa top or sa bottom? Yes sir. Okay. And then where is the air flowing kanang to? Like you're getting air from the top and bottom, but is it going into the toilets? No sir. Um, sa upper ng portion sir. Sa second floor? Uh, mostly there kay kuan man ka nang where I'm walled man siya sa ubos sir. Ang um, second floor na ako kay mo'y open sir. Uh, siya, sir, di lang maklaro, pero... Yeah, na I <laughs> Wala'y bintana na ka-drawing. So, dark na ka siya, sir, pero kanang railings rin siya, sir, so basically open rin yeah. siya during a part. So remember, yes. ang hot air moves up, bitaw. So if you go back to your ground floor, so just like a reminder lang for your future plates, you're taking the air basically at least this open to the outside bro it's very near the toilet so what i'm feeling na what will happen is you're taking the the air from the toilets from the kanima restroom area so also is it happening on the other pocket garden um ah delay concession okay, so yeah that was the only issue there i think it's that pocket garden is next to the um locker staff oh locker staff and toilet there it, it might like bring up the smells to your second floor so that's just something to consider when you design your pocket gardens so um as my sir dili siya near to the toilets next time oh, okay sir okay <laughs> thank you sir so um uh, na mention ako niya sir ang employee on street parking and um bike rocks can situated for to have a short distance walk away from their respective buildings, the bus stop area or to the terminal stop area. We also have here a water feature apart from its aesthetic, also serves to cool down the area in the terminal entrance and creates a sense of separation uh, from passenger flow to the designated areas to the bus stop and terminal stop area. Um, in the bus platforms, uh, two slots are allotted for each destination, so a total of so we have eight destinations, so we have a total of sixteen slots. The two slots are reserved for the bus that's idle parking and the one that's currently loading for that destination, depending on their turns. So passengers proceed to the loading bus platforms from the passenger hall and pass through the covered crosswalk. Um, yeah. So we also have here the public square which may serve as an extension of uh, extension of the commerce area from the concession space at the terminal building it can be accessed through use of sidewalks from bayfront SMC and SMC Cebu. it serves as a buffer between the terminal building and the Kaohsiung uh, terminal building and the oncoming traffic in major streets Kaohsiung Street and Sirius Mania Junior Boulevard Vegetations will be provided to support the, that strategy and also make the area comfortable and cool. The public square induces a sense of place and creates a mark not only to passengers but also a place where it entices local city dwellers to gather based on its function. It will serve as a rentable outdoor concession space inspired by the famous Subu Mercado in IT Park, Cebu, where it entices activity and socialization through commerce. The public square will attract boarding and alighting passengers to rest up for a while before facing a long trip or after a long trip. The advantage to rest up in a local bus terminal will make them appreciate the terminal's varied functions and its uh, warm Cebu Cebuano hospitality integrated into the functions and the design of the terminal. Um, moving on to second floor plan, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, there the bus stop area, terminal stop area are separate with regards to massing so as not to mix up their flow regarding, uh, considering their varied functions. This also includes separate locker rooms, restrooms, and cafeteria. Here, a uh, curtain wall is utilized. Uh, yes, sir? Yes, uh, Hannah, <laughs> 916 now, so we have like, a, I think I can allow 
three more minutes for your presentation so we can get to Q&A. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, so curtain wall is utilized in this area, sir. You have the stretch of the hallway pa, in, quite inspired from the Bauhaus for the terminal staff to have a visible glimpse of the passenger activity in the ground floor. Um, yeah, so we also have ha access here from concession space, which can also double as a fire exit. Uh, solar energy harvesting will be supported in this area for solar PV panels. The site location has a good coverage of the sun with well distance, distance and unobstructed from dense high-rise buildings. Uh, moving on to elevations. The facade is rectilinear and tries to mimic the surrounding building linearity from the Radisson Blue, Grand Tower Cebu, Bayfront, and SM City Cebu. It will contrast its linearity through irregular planes and angled facade treatments. Half of the height of the, here we can see half of the height of the elevation utilizes a curtain wall, and the other a half is built with louvers for passive cooling, all the while maintaining con control of the entry and exit of passengers. And the rest of the elevations and the cross section. And the perspectives. Okay, um, you can you show me your structural again? Mm, I I'm gonna include um, I guess I didn't really specify. Um, it would have been good to see the structural put on the roof because your roof is very kind of uh, dynamic. Uh, to show, can you show me a perspective of your roof, Katong entrance? Our roof is uh, there. So, how is that thing supported? Um, through steel, I can have I beam, sir, but. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, about the other picture down here, I think mas makita ni mo. Yeah. So you see, it's kanang cantilevers, yeah. Um, how thick do you think this is? Ang kaning roof. Uh, 150, uh, 150 millimeter of pagkuan ano sir. Okay. Uh, you see, naikan mo diagonal na column here, or slanting na column on the side. Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, what's that? Oh, uh, concrete sir, facade, facade treatment lang sir. Oh, facade treatment. Could you go on and show that? Is there, is there a sp perspective that shows all of that? Or maybe an elevation na lang? Yeah, ah, okay. So, muna siya um, murang treatment lang. Um, serve siya mm. as kanang overhang po sir. Hmm. Okay, okay. How far is the overhang? Um, ako ang answer kay point uh, one, one meter, mong guru to, sir. Ang yung, yung span, sir. Hindi ka nang mo, kuhan siya ba mo, cantilever ka nang wala support with us. So if you look at your plan, uh, go to your plan. Kana, oops. Uh, okay. uh, now go forward, roof plan, roof plan. Na. So what do you mean by what I mean by cantilever? So from where it's supported, how long does it extend out? Now will actually support. So um kita ka ng edge si mong wall. So how far out does the roof extend? Kaning kuan diagonal ni mo na roof bitaw. So more than four meters. Yes, sir. Santo na more at the highest point, mabot pagi shag eight. Yes, sir. Mm, that's actually that's actually possible for I wish na gipakita ni mo how it would be supported. Usually for cantilevers like this, I think let me Google that sa concrete cantilever slab um length. Four point eight. You can go two meters. I think this is a bit conservative over here. Ah, do, 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 do. so I'll just share. Don't don't end your screen. Yet. This is for the uh, for everyone who wants to do cantilevers. You can actually do something like this. Now it's very far away, but even then it looks a bit like four. But this one, this point here, 
if you can see my mouse, kita kas mouse. Yes, sir. It, it looks like mga eight now or ten even. But notice that the slab is thicker. Um, so at one fifty, kwan rag nipis kaya na you can't put support in. Also, it might just like break apart because it's very far away. So mo ten tendency na mo baga siya. So you can put more reinforcement in there. And then, um, so maybe, let's see here. It really depends on how far it is. And there's some calculations over here. Whoops. Uh, let's see, cantilever slab, image, something here. Beam slab, okay. I think this is the closest thing I can show. So notice ang rebar is above the slab and the thickness is 160 here but this is only um two meters two meter cantilever so the longer cantilever the slab actually gets thicker so notice this image here yes, so sir. i think you can just say na you can make it like 200 maybe 250 and you can say that it's supported with a kind of strong foundation so usually the foundation looks like um I don't have any images here, but I'll draw it in paint. Yeah, so you have your cantilever here. Usually the footing also goes something like that. Just to counteract the weight between money and soil. So the foot the footing is like very big. Um this the column is also very big. And then the slab here is also a bit thicker than usual. So let's say 250. And this column is like uh, whatever your standard column is, it just your footing is a bit bigger on this end, sort of to counteract the weight uh, over here. So this should be, uh, this area in red here should be heavier to support, uh, basically pull this up. So, on, so maybe the 150 is a bit, um, what do you call this? A bit optimistic. Uh, how do I stop sharing? So that's just like one uh, issue there. Uh, another oh, sorry, two or nine twenty-three. Another thing I want to check is your U-turn slot uh, among um, ground floor plan. How uh, how much is your turning radius there for the U-turn slots? Uh, private vehicles here in the taxi pickup area and also your buses. Ah, okay, sir. Um, can you show, sir, kay, uh, four meters niya ang kanan sa pick up sir and then sa kining buses sir i think 10 10 meters mungo sir or 8 meters ang yang radius sir for mm -hmm. turns ang four sector ang bus bus turning bus 180 think 8 would be okay if i remember correctly na double check but thank you for that 8 would be about it, about fine i think so kana lang, uh, just some minor issues here sa um, uh, conceptually sa pocket garden, sa roof structure, but the planning itself and the overall design here is actually uh, pretty good. Um, some other notes na ko is the, the public square um, could have a bit more like design. <laughs> and then this, uh, underneath the bus, the bus egress, there's a patch of land there. Can you share? Oh, can you bus? Can I share here? Now, well, there's nothing going on, so that could have been also designed as well. Okay, sure. Okay, Sigi. Thank so, you, sir. Um, no problem. Next, we have uh, Dela Pena, Rona. Present, sir. Sigi, go ahead, uh, share your screen. Uh, tell us about your kind of design process and kind of how did you achieve that? Or how did you reach uh, Kanina design? Like, what were the um, inspirations, factors, etc.? Okay, sir. Um, is it showing now, sir? Yep. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> good day, sir, and to everyone listening. Today, I'm going to present my design for a proposed Cebu North Bus Terminal. And the name for this proposed development is Lakbay. So, Lakbay, a Filipino term which means to travel or to journey, fits the modern Filipino design of the entire terminal development. So the development makes use of raw concrete finish paired with cool tones of woodworks, 
So this was inspired by the traditional homes of the Filipinos, which, were, uh, which makes use of concrete and wood that complements the tropical climate and is readily available in local stores. So the roofing of the building makes use of a mixed traditional gable and heap proof to enable rainwater runoff. The roofing makes use of roof cavities to aid for natural ventilation and release unwanted heat. So the form is basically divided into two main parts, um, which, uh, uh, which is the departure wing and the arrival wing. So the departure wing is adjacent towards Radisson Blue, this part here, and the arrival wing is adjacent towards us, um, this part here. So I will further explain why it is planned that way at the floor plan section. So just to give you an overview of how the development would look like, these are just some of my rendered interior and exterior perspective of the terminal. So we have here the foyer from the SM side. We have here an alley, an alley for the cars to exit. We have here the drop-off area. So this is the departure wing. This is the arrival wing. And this is just a perspective with uh, showing a bit of the site. I mean, the open part. So moving on for the vehicular flow, buses and private cars enter through Kaohsiung Street. So since the existing traffic flow will be coming from the right lane of Surya Osmania Boulevard, so coming from here, the entrance is placed along the Kaohsiung Street for an easy right turn for buses and cars. And to add, Kaohsiung Street has already a moderately fast traffic flow, which suggests that there will not be much of traffic congestion going on. And then the exits for both cars and buses is placed along the Surya Osmania Boulevard to follow the existing traffic flow. So this is the existing traffic flow. And plus this road has a fast traffic flow. So the drop-off area for public um, vehicles are placed along the Surya Osmania Boulevard as well for easy loading and unloading. For pedestrians, there is a direct access from SM side um, which is provided because it is expected that a lot of people will be coming from the SM side. But at the same time, there is also a pedestrian access along the um, along the, the Kaohsiung Street um, to cater to those pedestrians coming from that side. So moving on, we have here for the site conditions, the building is oriented where it receives abundant of airflow from northeast and southeast monsoon. So this will help in cooling the interior of the building. Next, for the sun path, <clears throat> the arrival area usually experience here an early morning sunlight between 9 to 10 in the morning. And to avoid too much light that would potentially heat the interior, sun shaders were applied to serve as a sun blocker and at the same time aid for airflow. So vegetation are abundant along the borders of the development to at least defend traffic noise and provide extra sun shading. So if you're wondering why there is not much tree, not much trees in the open park, it is because I wanted to expose the park from the views um, coming from the Radisson Blue and also here at this side coming from Bayfront. So during daytime and nighttime. And the downside for this is it is not ideal to use um, this outdoor dining during the harsh afternoon because there is not much shading going on. So to add to the Filipino vibe of the design, instead of making this open um, area just a park, I decided to make it a food park instead because it has become a Filipino culture to dine out with family and friends, especially on open areas like this. So just like what we have in IT Park, uh, where we have the Sugbo Mercado and in the Talisay where we have Il Corso's outdoor dining. Going through the, <clears throat> I'm sorry, going through the floor plans. So the placing of the arrival wing is influenced by the flow of the buses. So this is where the entrance goes. So since the buses enter through Kaohsiung Street, it would be easier for the bus drivers to park directly at the side coming from the entrance and for the departure wing, it is um, placed near the exit for an easy parting of buses. So this gives the traffic a more direct flow. So the departure wing is also placed near the SM side here, um, <clears throat> here to aid for convenience of pedestrians where most of them will be coming from SM. Most of the spaces are located at the departure wing because it is usually where people spend most of their time waiting, unlike in the arrival wing where people just come and go. 
So the maintenance shop is separated from the main building so that it would not distract the users. It is also where the conductor's area is placed. So I, I also have placed a bit of a car parking and a motorcycle parking for the staff and for those who do not want to park at SM, especially that SM parking is only open at 10 in the morning until 9 in the evening from Monday to Sunday. So, but they offer an overnight parking with a specific amount fee, then it could um, be expensive as well. So this parking area in the design will serve for those users traveling at times beyond 9 p.m. or early dawn, and it is just for free. So for sustainable, um, for sustainable systems use, the development adapts to a paleo uh, piezoelectric flooring to maximize and take advantage of the constant traffic flow of both vehicles and pedestrians. So as you can see here in the image, mechanical energy for every step will be stored and converted into electrical energy, then will be used to power the entire building structure. So moving on, we have here on the second floor, this is where the back of the house is usually located. So to keep it private and away from public reach. At this floor, we have the public canteen. So this is separated from the rest of the spaces at the ground floor to avoid unwanted destructions from passerby while um, someone is eating. So the second floor of the building makes use of louvered fins to block harsh sunlight at the same time aids natural ventilation to cool the entire building. So this is a blow up of the roof cavity as that I mentioned a while ago. So when the inside of the roof gains heat, it would be easier for hot air to be released and cool air to get in due to this roof um, cavities. So this will help in mitigating unwanted heat gain. So here next we have is a blow up of the departure wing. So since all the public toilet is located at the departure wing, so uh, it is placed bit, a bit near at the entrance So for those coming from the arrival area. So there is also an elevator to aid for PWD access and it and it makes use of machine room less elevator due to that um, it would not, uh, my roof could not cater a uh, machine room. So for the elevations, um, floor to ceiling height is about four meters to give each floor a grand space. So this also facilitates better natural ventilation for spaces and natural light, <clears throat> especially for the ground floor. So. Maximizing the daylight avoids using of artifi artificial light, thus saves energy. The second floor of the building makes use of louvered fins, so the one that I showed a while ago, to block harsh sunlight at the same time aids natural ventilation to cool in the entire building. So this is uh, my rear and right side elevation. So the concept is still the same. It still has the louvered um, fins on the second floor. So moving on to my next, um, to my sections um, for the terminal building, which is cut through the departure area. So as you can see here on my key plan, so at this part of the structure, it is um, open to below as well as this side. So this is to maximize the use of daylight coming from um, mostly the east. So the next slide, so here, the next slide shows a diagram for my tactile blocks. So the tactile blocks leads to important places of the building, like here in the ticketing booth. So from the entrance up until the ticketing booth, the toilets, the waiting area, and many more. So it is also applied on the second floor. So for my MEP diagram, so spaces that uses air conditioning would be mostly the offices. So I have here my key plan on the first floor. So the blue figures are for the air supply and unit and the red are for the exhaust and the um, air handling unit is located outside the structure. So next we have, um, same goes to the second floor, the blue figures are for the air supply unit, the red are for the exhaust and the air handling unit is located on the exterior part of the building. So this part of the, um, second floor is mostly the toilets the uh, and the private offices. So next for the arrival wing area, only the retail spaces here, we have the souvenir shop and the retail space have air conditioning unit and these spaces will use a split type air conditioning system together with its exterior unit. 
So we have here the exterior unit and we have here the interior unit. So for the lighting, most of the spaces are using a 6 watts um, LED downlight with cool white color temperature. Uh, 12 watts compact fluorescent lamp here. 2U with cool white cool temperature. Color temperature will be used at the foyer area and lobby outside the departure wing. So here on the second floor, it can be seen. Aaron, For I have uh, two minutes. Ah, okay, sir. So let's just move on to the plumbing system. So water supply here will be coming from the exterior overhead tank because the design of the roof do not aid for roof overhead tank so this will supply to the toilets for both the ground floor and the second floor so same goes to my sanitary system so the septic tank will be located near the radisson blue where there is only little access to the public so for the second floor um we have here a blowout of some paul um uh i mean the sanitary fixtures and together with its pipe fittings. So the structural diagram, the roof makes use mostly of kanang truss system with angle bars as its main material. So we have here my, um, I've shown here the details of my footing. So I have two kinds of footing, a smaller one and a larger one. So 3,000 3, by 3,000 millimeter and a 2,000 by 2,000 millimeter. So to close my presentation, here is a short video for you to have a good grasp of the entire proposed Cebu North bus terminal. Oh, I, it has audio, sir. Yeah, no audio. I'm thinking that like for fifth year beta, it might be better na um, audio would be optional so you can discuss what's happening in the video. Okay. Ah, okay, sir. <laughs> Naanat ko, sir, nga magbutang o ganang audio sa walkthrough. Okay, okay usually mo ni may tabo sa Jesus Defense without sa fifth year na they play the video and it's very quiet, very nice from Rock. Sayang bitaw ang time na you could be explaining your design and you're just like one showing it. Ah, okay, you. sir. Okay, sir. I'll it's take note of that. It's just personal preference, though. Say, yes, sir. Just put sa beginning, especially ah, okay, sir. <laughs> And uh, all the features of your ah, uh, okay, sir. design. So, Murag, instead of having like a fixed image with text on mm. the pages, and then you align what's happening with the screen with like your. Ah, okay, sir. Manana, sir. Not much questions on design itself. Because uh, we're, I think, we already like consulted this several times. And I just have like a few uh, notes. So here is the canteen area, the public one that I've stated. Um, here is the foyer from the SMC side, I mean, side, SM side. So here is my arrival wing. It is really direct. There's only a direct flow. So these are the sun shaders that I've mentioned a while ago. Yep. from the departure wing and here is a view from the front hotel and a view from Radisson too so that's why I didn't put too much trees just to expose this open area My conductor area, so it's just open basically. And that's all. Thank you for listening. Okay, so we had uh, just a few minutes for question and answer. I'll share my screen. Uh, did you do? So, just one minor issue I have with the plan over here. Uh, to hit up a screen. Um, this turning point here might be a bit too tight, uh, especially kanina distance without here on this island. I can really see na ang buses are trying to go out, but there's someone here who's trying to come in. Mm -hmm. So this okay, might sure. be a conflict area. So the solution is just to reduce this. So maybe mm -hmm. nana lang. So it, like you can fit maybe two cars waiting here so that uh, mm -hmm. there's a bit of buffer for when a bus wants to go out. 
So kanan di gitsa magkuan bitaw. Um really reduce the chance of them like uh not really hitting each other but vying or like uh trying to get out at the the bus is at the same time trying to get out and another car is trying to get in. So if you give them more space, that will, that will be, um, that will help mitigate Kanana event or Kanana situation. Uh, two cars are trying to go like basically the same direction or like a bus and a car, etc. cetera. Oh, okay, sir. I haven't okay. thought of that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. That's just a minor again issue. The interior spaces are fine. The treatment of the building, the plaza is fine. Um, actually very more than fine, like excellent. And I think some small on the details here could have been good too. Ah, for that, sir, I, mm. I've kind of decided not to put anything at all on that part mm. because it would serve as my expansion area. So mm. you could it just would label. cost a lot. No good, mm. sir, if... Yeah, you can just label here expansion area. Yeah, okay, sir. Just for like para those who are like new to it, or especially katong mga sa usayoban teachers, really want you to label everything. So. Oh, yes, <laughs> I, I um, forgot that part. And maybe <clears throat> um, site planning wise, this area here, you could have a, you could probably do like a small roof thing here just to mm. like reinforce this kind of rug symmetrical in the design. Mm -hmm. uh, that's okay. just very, that's very minor though. Uh, everything is excellent as usual. And then um, why I was very quiet during your presentations, I was looking up the uh what do you call this the piezoelectric tiles so yes, for those who want more research on that i actually uh, uh google gave me this document that does um analysis uh case studies cost of the tiles and um turns out i thought this was for vehicles was just for people no um there's kanang piezoelectric tiles sir and there's also a piezoelectric pavement like roads you'd say, ah sir. okay okay apparently according to the study it says here that it's uh it does not produce sound will produce will reduce electricity bills uh etc etc but it's apparently not so durable at least as of this the writing of this journal this is 2019 so not that old maybe they made some like more durable versions of piezoelectric tiles and apparently it's like of course you have a higher down payment because you're adding more stuff and it, interestingly it has high temperature sensitivity apparently so um still worth looking into but like uh, good to know now maybe it, it, for indoor uh, tiles you have to like keep it shaded and for the pavement ones i think it should be fine but whoever wants more information on this this is really something interesting that will make a very good thesis. I'll just download this in case I lose it. <laughs> uh, to add, lang, yes. sir, re mm. re with regards to that, kanang piezoelectric flooring, sad, sir, with regards to kanang mga road and pavements, kay, there are a lot na jud, sir, of kanang concept na apply ni, uh, towards the civil works. Uh, just like mm. we have in a Tokyo railway station. So it was in, they installed a piezoelectric flooring that uses kinetic energy to generate about 1,400 kilowatts or energy per day, so enough to power mm -hmm. ticket gates and displays. So, of course, in all, also in Toulouse, France, the recently became the first city to put the pressure-sensitive piezoelectric modules. So they have it on sidewalks that which generates their um, enough energy to power their street lamps. Sir. Mm -hmm. And just for comparison, let's see here. Pilato, 1,000 kilowatts. 1,400 kilowatts of energy per day. 1,400 kilowatts per day. Okay. And I'm looking at my uh, VECO bill here. Um, usually we use in a, in a house, like a household me four people, um, NIREF, we use air conditioning. Our monthly consumption is about 800 kilowatts uh, per month. So the whole month na, and then you're saying na kaning piezoelectric tiles is generating 1,000 per day. Yes, sir. Based on my research, sir. Mm, so that's a lot of power. <laughs> Imagine, uh, just for kanang even more sort of context, VECO charges, uh, let's see here, um, for 800, uh, let's say 800 kilowatts, uh, about 800 kilowatts per month. That's about, uh, let's see here. And uh, looking for the bill amount. So they can think about it in money. Uh, let's see. Ah, here. 
generation charge. I'm trying to find the per kilowatt hour charge of peso. Uh, do, 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 do. It's here. How about this? I'll just say calculate. I have about 100, so 100 kilowatt hours. I just need everyone to know. <laughs> um, 700 divided by 100, is that right? Sorry, I'll share my screen very quickly. Sorry for the next presenter, share. So trying to find the bill here, it's kind of difficult, okay? This, so let's say 800 kilowatt hours per month is our normal per month. Uh, K kilowatt hours. And then I think that time it was, how much was it? Like 10,000? I think about 10,000. Or let's say, yeah, 10,000 about. So 10,000 PHP per month. And I want to remove the month here is um, per month, Nisha, per month. Mm. Ah, my brain is like lagging. Uh, per month, I want the kilowatts per peso. Like how do I reduce this? I think it's because they have different units, kilowatt hour. <laughs> Wait, I'm looking at the seven. Can anyone like help me out here? Do I, is there a way to convert this? <laughs> or am I doing my algebra wrong? Seven point five. I'm looking at my bill times four nine two. Is this correct? That's not it. Ah, why is it feel so confusing? Distribution charge, system loss. So what I'm trying to do is 800 over here per kilowatt hour. I'm trying to find the, I'll just like Google it, dang it. <laughs> uh, I saw like a Sun Star, sir, na article. What? Okay, la. <clears throat> it says, nga, pero 2015, ni, sir, it says Mecco is charging 8 pesos per kilowatt hour. Okay, so eight pesos per kilowatt hour. Thank you. <laughs> so let's imagine 1,000 kilowatt hour times eight. That's 8,000 pesos additional per day. Am I doing my math right? 1,000 kilowatt hours times eight pesos per kilowatt hour equals 8,000 pesos worth of energy, diba? Um, Wait, <laughs> I'm, I'm confused, sir. I'm confused, okay. Eight pesos per kilowatt hour, man, diba? Oh, yes. Wait, let me just put a confused focus on Googling on. So we have, we're generating sa katong piezoelectric tiles, 1,000 kilowatt hour per day. Yes, sir. For koalan as well, sir, for uh, consumable. Yeah, Meko is charging 8 pesos per kilowatt hour. Diba? Yes, sir. So that's 1,000 times 8, diba? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so it's now basically you're generating 8,000 pesos per day if you have the same sort of amount of traffic as Tokyo train station, and then you just multiply that, let's say, for a month, that's like 30 days. That's 240,000 pesos of like energy being generated by the piezoelectric tiles per month yes <laughs> so just imagine that amount of energy Vital. so this is the kind of things like uh, i think would really make a good thesis if we can like somehow build this into our building so i uh, just really wanted to highlight that sorry na delay ang previous na, na presenter um beatrice are you there morning sir morning so yeah i just wanted to highlight that like uh, sustainable technology is really something just imagine good 200 say let's just say 200 round up 200 pesos, 200 000 pesos per month that's the value we're missing out on that's, i'm sure even the kanang crop officials will want that money <laughs> yeah 
I will start here. Yes, go ahead. Kita <laughs> Ase. Yep, kita Ase. So you uh, start, you have 10 minutes. I'll just keep my question short. We're running low on time. <clears throat> so, Connector is the title of the proposed new bus terminal. So it's a tropical pavilion, more so than a, a building. So a terminal is something that binds and connects all routes from, all, from one place to another. And I want to make that an essence for the proposal for the new bus terminal that will bind and connect all the provinces of Cebu like an anchor. And since it is tailored to be an open space as well as capture the essence, um, as well as capture the essence of connection amongst people and the outside, it is also an important aspect into the overall, overall design of the proposal. So the goal for the open space is to promote inclusivity to the public. So in the site analysis, for, to, for the strategies, the main building uses horizontal sun shading device um, uh, to give you better visuals. So the main building uses horizontal sun shading device that protects the building from it, from the direct sun penetration during the day or mid noon and the hot, hottest time in the afternoon, which is 3 p.m. So the integration of horizontal sun shading device will act as a clear story opening at, that not only prevent the heat build up within the building, but also allow prevailing winds in the northeast and southwest um, side to effectively penetrate the interior of the building and minimize, minimizing the mechanical system usage such as uh, air conditioner. Uh, also integrated into the building is um, a 5% of total roof area of skylight, which is adequate amount of sunlight that comes that comes in but still maintain comfortable temperature within the lobby of the building, which is um, mostly using natural ventilation. So curtain wall treatment is also integrated facing towards the north side which takes advantage of the unharmful natural light during the day. So in the site development, um, taking, taking into consideration the SMCT Cebu in the neighboring site where the My Bus is also currently utilizing the North Bus Terminal, um, a parking and terminal for My Bus are provided and integrated into the proposed development. So it will be, uh, so the My Buses will be coming in from here um, because it's across the uh, neighboring SMCT Cebu and will exit through the south side of the building, uh, south, south side of the site. I don't know, uh, I'm just like making a note oh, of the first tiles. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, the my bus terminal will be exiting from here if they wish us to go to the um, branches of uh, SMCT, SMC side and an exit for for the my bus terminal coming out from the north uh, um, going to the SM consolation will be coming out from here which is the 30 meter Kaohsiung street so for the coach buses um, it also provided an entry for the 30 meter road in Sergio Asmania street which is at least uh, which is the least used road around the site and exits through the Kaohsiung Street, which is barrier free with no street islands, which is ideal to exit to go smoothly with the uh, traffic. So in the pedestrians, so the main pedestrian approach on the site is located at a 12 meter road across SMCT, SMCT and is adjacent the well-known hotel uh, Radisson Blue and Bayfront Hotel, 
where potential passengers and pedestrians will be most likely be coming from, all three sides of the site is provided access to for it to be accessible and more welcoming and more wel welcoming to the people and the public. So, and also minimizing long walks going to the sites. So the, for the private parking, um, private vehicles and taxis are provided access along the Kaohsiung Street, which is the 20 meter road with four lanes. Um, though it, it is the most busy street or the most busy road in the area, it makes it the most favorable access to the site since both private and private vehicles use, utilizes the road. So it has a 6.2 uh, one-way road, which separates a drop-off, provided a drop-off and a private uh, vehicle drop-off. So that way, um, no U-turns will be allowed uh, within the sites and all private vehicles and taxis will be exiting in one direction, which is the 12 meter road, and to avoid counter flow as well. So, private vehicles are also provided uh, parking spaces for the purpose of passengers and users' convenience if waiting for someone for the arrivals, for passengers with large amounts of baggage, and most importantly, for PWD users or passengers so also provided in the site are the um, maintenance or the maintenance area which is for the PUV drivers and conductors as well as the coach bus conductors and drivers as well so they share the same resting area also providing a canteen and food food stalls for both the drivers and the employees. Uh, the maintenance area is considered as back of the house of the building. Um, thus, it is located at the at the Radisson Blue um, side of the side of the site where it is not visually uh, it's not visu visually visible to the public. So concession spaces also are provided um with food stalls alfresco sitting sitting area for, for open space for passengers and non-passengers with a garden and activity lawn and even though the terminal c uh, the terminal and the c has quite a distance in between them and the port is quite underdeveloped we can always see it as an opportunity for a potential sea view um if the sea uh the sea cebu port does indeed go through a further development so an open space here and um, water feature where uh, users can cool off during the day and in the in the plan the the passengers go through here where um, it is just an open plan barriers free to avoid to avoid misdirection from the from the passengers and also avoid the of use of the usage of signages hi beatrice you have uh, two minutes so maybe pick up the pace <laughs> uh, so um boarding uh, passengers will be coming in from here um for the ticketing area and go through the departure area and a boarding area which is very self-explanatory and exits through here um access through here and here to the parking space and the main entrance and exit. I think that's it, sir. Uh, elevations? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, this is the um, uh, deck view for the um, concession space. Mm -hmm. So it's on the second floor, okay, deck. Uh, that was for the concession space for the, uh, this part. Um, this part, sir. It's a separate structure. Ah, separate the structure. Okay. Yeah. Can you show it's a site plan? Yeah, it's right here. In the second okay. floor, you can see the deck view sitting. 
Mm, is it covered? Um, the deck peak is not covered, sir, but the dining below it is covered. Mm, okay, so for kanang landong days. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, do you have any other perspectives that you got to show? So this is the main lobby. So the barrier here it, uh, goes up and down only. So um, passengers and users can just go in, in and out and it is most of the time open. So, okay, uh, structural? Unfortunately, I was in, I wasn't able to provide structural. <gasps> well, okay, structural. Oh, no. Yes. Mm, uh, mechanical, electrical. Uh, mechanical, yes, sir. I, I have here my um, sanitary uh, water supply rainwater diagram. So, mm -hmm. rainwater will be collected through here uh, and water, water filter, and it's and it will pump it will pump going through the pipe chases and the utility rooms and supply all the toilets um up and down Easy. also connected to the water supply okay so um just like another few notes here i have like 1002 so share that for the screen so this is for not just for beatrice but for everyone like whenever you do a park design or like uh, you include like an open park in your in your uh, proposal um don't just leave it here like on the outside like this like sort of just in the side of the site really integrate it into your building uh for example um this, there's a missed opportunity here in the um, building is pretty much uh just what they call this you can move the building either like to the left or to the right because it's like self-contained without like it stands on its own it's not really kind of connected or it has, doesn't really need to be here next to the bus the, the in this central area very easily you can move it here like this and then you can put your central park where the building footprint is the benefit of this is like if you look at the orientation north is down here we have east here and then we have west here. So wait, sorry. Uh, west is I uh, west is here. Let's see. You have west here and then you have east here. So in the afternoon, um, the sun can still penetrate it like this from here, but in the morning, um, there might be some shading here. So it will look like your building will be here provide some shading in this area here so maybe i think now that i know that west is this way maybe it would have been better if the building was here so you can provide shading that way so something like that without just like a bit more integrated say among outdoor spaces the indoor spaces are good but the site planning could be improved and i think that's just a general note for everyone especially those who have their open space just like outside the building and sort of just filling up space instead of it being integrated into the design so uh that's just it okay thank you beatrice so i'll add more notes like on the canvas yes, okay next we have um janelle yes sir i'll present my screen Maybe go ahead uh and also once you're done with the presentation you may leave with google meet in case you have other assignments to finish um the proposal really is just for me to check uh <laughs> Uh, can the, you hear me or, sir? You just to check your proposals yes go ahead uh, okay so this is my proposed north bus terminal it the concept is sustainable and flood resilient so the concept of this proposed north bus terminal is to create a safe and sustainable flood resilient bus terminal building this is to counter uh, uh, occurrences of high flood levels since the Philippines is prone to experiencing major typhoons, especially the recent one called Typhoon Odette. And um, the building incorporates simple linear forms to draw the eyes of the user as they walk along the building. So this is my site plan and site analysis. So you can see here on the top part, there's a sun path and the uh, wind so the building is oriented to catch um a lot of winds 
So to do this also is to uh, have the building have um, open hallways um, from ground floor and second floor. This will also support my concept on sustainable. And I also have solar panels along the roof of the main building and the roof of the pathway so that it will also help with the sustainable concept. Um, the reason why I also place solar panels in the pathway is because uh, for the users to also see, like in the second floor, that we incorporated a sustainable concept such as the solar panel and the rain garden system. The rain garden system helps in, um, in it's like uh, it works like a detention pond, but it's like more like a upgraded version because you know um, there are like plants there that will help um, filter the water and also like help in not making the place flooded. And uh, to also make the area not so hot, I incorporated um, long longer roof eaves so that the building will be shaded and not be so hot. This is my traffic analysis. So the buses enter from the 20 meter road and exit from the 12 meter road. The reason why I use 20 meter road is because um, I noted that um, for me, most of the time, 20, the 20 meter road is more traffic than the 30 meter road. However, this might change um because it differs from the time of the day and like what day it is and then the reason why i also have the drop off area in the 12 meter road is so that um to separate the traffic of the bus and the cars i also have like a parking space for the staff at the at the rear portion of the building and um I, I have waiting area um, beside the where the buses will park for the convenience of the users who are waiting for the buses. And so there's like 32 seatings per columnation and a total of this would be 448 seating area. I also use an eight meter bus road to give space when the bus will backing and for also space for buses to pass through to improve the efficiency of the building. And I incorporated terminal signage and bus info stand so that people will know where they are and will be able to find where the buses will park for their next destination so first the people will come either from the sm city or from bayfront and then they will go in and get their tickets and uh if they don't know how to use a ticketing machine they can also ask the cashier's office and i also provided a mechanical and electrical room for the solar panels and I also have concession spaces for people if they want to grab something to eat and toilets in both wings. So this is just a mirror of the other side also. Concession spaces, cashier and ticketing, toilets. I also provided a ramp for people, for the PWD if they want to access the second floor. And then this is my second floor. So it's still an open hallway. As you can see in this perspective, it's an open hallway. So natural ventilation can come in. Um, the concept of the second floor is just a commercial floor. So it's filled with retail spaces. I also provided a public toilet. And the staff is at the rear because if you see in the previous plan, it's the staff parking area is at the rear side. So I made the staff area also at the rear. It all it consists of the admin, PRO, security, staff canteen, their own personal staff toilet, a resting room, and the room for the bus conductors and maintenance 
stuff. And then this is my roof plan. So you can, you already saw it before. It had solar panels. I also have rooftop units for the, for the cassette type. And I also have skylight for the part, uh, this part, the ramp area. And then this is my elevations. This is my section. And this is my exterior perspective and a side perspective. This is my uh, interior perspective of the hallway, the so second floor, and interior perspective of the ground floor. This is my mechanical plan. Uh, I made a blow up because it's kind of hard to see if you just have the whole entire plan. Uh, for the ground floor, it mainly uses a uh, split type because the area is like very small. It's only for the cashier, the mechanical room, and the lactating station. In the second floor, I use cassette type for the retail spaces. And uh, and the split type for the lactating station again. And mm -hmm. and then the, the rooftop units is on the roof of the second floor. That's for the cassette type in the second floor. And then these are my um, electrical plan. This is for the ground floor. I use um, LED long a long LED strip, light strip, and a round down light. The round down light, I use that inside the rooms because it's small, Rasad. And then for the second floor, I use um, the LED long light strip inside the rooms for the retail spaces. It's um, The reason why I also use this one is because it also supports my concept of having linear forms. This will draw the eyes of the users going towards the rooms and along the hallways. And then this is my utility diagram. Uh, two minutes left, Jenna. And this is my structural, sir. Uh, I use uh, concrete for the main structure and steel for the part where the process will drive. So I have steel poles, steel beams. Then for the main structure, it's concrete pole, uh, concrete column and concrete beams. Uh, that's all, sir. Mm, is a is a steel like angled and then connected to the conc concrete column? That's what's um, happening here? The only angled part is when it connects from the main structure to the to the part where the buses will just park so I, the parking um, area yeah so it looks like this right sir uh, can you, this this kind of uh, diagonal member is what i'm talking about so it's sticking to the column like that yeah mm. is there a reason why uh, you chose that and not just like make it like flat all the way um I chose this because it also to like put more support since triangles are um, mm -hmm. stronger and it's like pretty far set. So mm. to make I was, it I'm look asking more that because um, my next, my follow up question is why is it also not on the other side? The other side. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I didn't put it in the other side is because it might also interfere with the buses. Like it might hit when the buses Part. Mm, okay, okay, okay. So it should be fine without the diagonal because it's just uh, the roof. So I'm just like, oh, okay. is it more of a design thing or just you just want it to be extra safe? Extra safe. <laughs> yes, okay. So uh, not much questions here because this, uh, I think we talked about this design several times already. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I, that did stand out to me though are, is the, the first floor lighting or the ground floor lighting uh, plan. Ground floor. Ground floor lighting. Yes, it seems like there at the back, an electrical plan. Yes, it seems like we're going to subra ancha gamay sa 
so I used to many lights. LED light strips. So zoom in, zoom in a bit. Yes, like uh, between nine and ten. Yeah, there. Okay. So what is the spacing between your uh, LED light strips? I think it's three meters or two meters. Two meters, Sasha. So every two meters, na I one lighting strip, and then in between. Uh, wait, let me just snip na lang para much, much clearer. Okay. Okay, okay. It might be a scale thing, but I just want to confirm. Share my screen. Okay. So we have, so this distance, what is this distance? That distance. Looks like three. Yeah, three meters. Okay. And then this distance here, mga one. Yeah, mga 1.5. 1.5. So I think easily you could have, you could remove these, like every other uh, lighting strip. Or a three, yeah, one, sir. Yeah. Okay. It's... It's a bit too much because like, you might be using too much electricity. Uh, okay. It just gets too bright, so unnecessary bit out. So this this will depend on the type of lighting you have, the type of um, bulbs you have. But usually, you don't want them to be this close unless it's like an office space or a um, a space where you do a lot of work and um, study study. Mm -hmm. Like manufacturing, but if it's just like a lobby area, you don't you don't need that much light. Uh, so it will look very very bright. Should <laughs> okay okay. You didn't over design them, so I think it's also like a deadline thing. But that's pretty much my notes on that. Uh, the plan again, I want to highlight how effect like how how bus terminal design you really have to simplify everything. And if you go to your site dev, I just want to show the other students. Um, those will be watching just one exit, one entrance. Just keep it simple so you don't complicate your um, what we call it, vehicle flow and like passenger flow. So that will be a critique again. Multiple entrances work. They're gonna like zigzag to the side. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Janelle. Let's okay, move on to the next one. Uh, Vanessa, are you there? Uh, hi, sir. Good morning. Sigi. It's another design that we've like sh uh, showcased thoroughly. <laughs> oh, okay, so um, good morning. So good this morning. is the new Cebu North bus terminal. So just an overview. My design is inspired by a wave. So a wave has a several meanings. So as a verb, it means to lose, uh, to move loosely to and from. And it relates to one of my design objectives, which is to create an order of space that is systematic to avoid delays in travel. And as a noun, a wave is a shape or outline having successive curves. And one of the design elements that makes a terminal, terminal attractive and stand, stand out is its curvilinear roofing, which is made with steel trusses. So this sculptural element elevates the rigid structure and strict circulation of the space. So it breaks the order and creates an interest within the design. So a rigid structure also represents simplicity, which is another design concept. The rigidity is seen from the rectangular shape of the building mass, the green spaces, and vehicular routes. So even with the rigidity of the structure, curves are still integrated with the, um, as seen here in front, um, the architectural cutout elements on walls. So here are some of the design goals and features of my design. So um, this is facing the, 30 meet, the 20 meter road. Oh, wait. I'm sorry, wait. Is it the 20 meter? I'm so sorry. Oh, it's a 20 meter road. Okay. Okay. Sorry, so, so this is facing the 20 meter road. So um, Bayfront Hotel is here, Madison Blue is here, and SM City is here. So in this area, I have a universal design. This is where my PWD private parking is. So I have one here and another one here. And then in this area, I have my future expansion. So that's my green spaces. Um, over here is my multimodal 
this is where my feeder modes are so taxi and the pj lanes here and then in this area i have a sustainable design which is my green spaces i have another sustainable design solar lights and then more um, future expansion is my bus parking so this passenger docking area is actually 3.5 meter wide so uh, later on they can just take that out and make it more into parking spaces. So other than that, the docking space is also for passenger safety. And then another passenger safety is the pedestrian lanes and sidewalks for accessibility. And then multimodal different vehicular routes for the buses. So here at the back, we have a separate entrance and exit. And then accessibility is one way of traffic. And then I also have raised pedestrian lanes here. And lastly is my tactile blocks for the visually impaired. So as you can see here. Okay, so this is a blow up axonometric view. So um, you can see like how the people moved around the building. So um, another thing to point out, my design is actually, uh, I separated the spaces. So I have one building for the departure building, one building for the arrival. And then for the middle portion is where my offices are. And I place them specifically in the middle so they can see the flow of the buses. So I think that's the most important thing for the passengers to be able to safely ride into the bus and for the buses to um, successfully go out of the terminal and go to their destinations. So for just a little inspiration, so my color scheme is actually um, inspired by the surrounding building. So from the Madison Blue, um, peach and beige color and from the Essence City style um, cladings and then also uh, I noticed that Radisson Blue has like a tint of green or blue glass walls as well as SM I think this is just cladding and then also um, from Bayfront so they also have like a hint of green and blue and then they also uh, Bayfront also has like a curvilinear while SM and Radisson is uh, rectilinear so I thought like why not just um, kind of integrate both so this is what it looks like um, at first I really wanted it to be just white but then I think that um, it turned out better with the color so yeah so this is just some of the perspectives so this is my uh, still trust I think that's the most um, yeah that's like the highlight of the design my trust Roofing. Okay, so anyways, this is just a bit of a run through of the perspectives, the interior. Okay, so for my site development, I identified the traffic flow and I noticed, I just followed that um, this 30 meter road is a good, good, as a good location for an entrance of the buses. And then they just exit here because um, based on what I noticed, um, this is where the cars or buses usually um, exit so basically just that this is the bus entrance and then exit one way and then for the departure building i have here my taxi and credit vehicle entrance then exit as well and then on the other side is my arrival arrival building so entrance here by the 12 meter road and then exit so uh, for this here as i mentioned earlier i place here my multimodal access so i have a taxi lane here and then i have a PUJ, puj lane here okay so yeah i think that's it i guess so i just analyzed the sun path and wind path and i uh, using enscape i was able to um, see the shadows or how the sun moved throughout my structure so at 7 a.m and then 12 p.m and then by 4 p.m so uh, with this structure in the middle, the sun can freely access this whole space here. Um, yeah, so there's like natural natural sunlight from there. Cause, yeah, cause here to there. And then for the wind, um, I didn't want the wind to be blocked by any massing. So I think um, having this structure elevated would allow the wind to move freely along the side. So Oh, and then also for the sun pollution as well. So sun pollution is everywhere. So that's why I place vegetation all around just to buff out the noise. Okay, so for my floor plan, oh no, let's zoom. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, yes, um, 
Wait, I can't zoom in. So sorry. Ah, kana. Okay, should I open a PDF na lang sir? Wait, see the date? Uh, okay, yeah, it's fine. Oh, okay, yeah, this is more casual uh, than kind of practice run now for your thesis. <laughs> Two years from now. <clears throat> so this is my floor plan. Um, sadly, I I just added also my tactile blocks, so I should have uh, separated that. But anyways, so this is my departure building here. So it's my tactile blocks is located all around the structure, but uh, for the spaces, it's only um, placed in spaces where the visually impaired, like basically the important spaces. So that's the money exchange, just one lane, and then for the seating, and then for the passenger information center, and then my ticket area, then my boarding area. So just like a little like kind of highlights on my floor plan, my circulation space, I added a greeneries along the sides, and then I have tactile blocks all the way out to the bus, to the buses, and then also I have food kiosks, so along the sides, so outside, so that, um, even if the passengers are not yet inside the building, they are already able to um, enjoy the different uh, things that the terminal can offer. So mm -hmm. basically, my departure and arrival building is quite similar, except that for the arrival building, there's no more um, the ticket area, there's no more cashier's office. So just right away, the information area. Mm. And then, so... Yeah, two minutes, Vanessa. Oh my gosh, okay. So moving on, uh, moving on. So this is so for my second floor building. It's just mostly cafeterias. Yeah, it's just a cafeteria, and also like I also highlighted like the front of the house and the back of the house. So I just integrated both of them together, and then yeah. So this is my elevation. So my my structure is eighteen meters, and I actually. Um, I remembered what you told me, sir, like how um, it's important for the person's eye view level to be able to see the structure, like it's not so near, not so far. So I actually solved it in 25, 25 degrees. So um, the distance between the front and the back areas is 52 meters. So I just solved it with Sokatoa and then um, I, I, it resulted to a height of 24 meters. Uh, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it resulted to uh, mm -hmm. like the maximum height of the structure with this distance is 24 meters. So it kind of just fits with the 17 meter lang. It did not exceed 24 meters. Mm. So just basically that. Okay, so um, I just wanted to point out that the left side elevation, it kind of looked like this because um, my roofing is slanted. So it kind of appears that the trusses are, um, it's like a sawtooth. But mm. actually, this is if the elevation view is if you're in line with the roof. But if you're a person or if you're a user looking at the roof, um, it wouldn't really look like that. It would actually you would actually see the bottom part of it here. So just like this. So mm. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, I think it's a bit misleading with how it came to a sawtooth, but it's just really because the roof is um curved, so it kind of appears like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, elevations and then sections and then this is my uh, structural so um, my columns are actually 0 0.8 meters thick 0.8 by 0.8 then first concrete column so I just extended um, the second floor columns up to the roof so that it can uh, hold my truss okay, so I just have my mechanical plans um, for the escalator and then for the elevator, then our air, con air conditioning units as well. And then my lighting is um, uh, 500 millimeters, oh wait, 500 millimeters distance, I think. No, five meter distance rather. Okay. So I have a solar panel diagram. Okay, so I'll just run through over this. So basically my solar panels, how it works is, 
from the solar panels, it goes to a junction box and then to an inverter. And my inverter room, I actually use the room below my as my stairway and escalator. And then I use that area as a solar panel inverter room. And then, yeah, to the switches. Mm -hmm. Switch. Switches like that. And then for my plumbing, I have my um, water supply and then the drainage. And yeah, that's all the same. Okay, good. So pretty straightforward design here. Uh, again, uh, similar to, I think we had, I forget that student's name who also had the parametric roof last Monday. And it looks actually a lot like super dynamic, really nice to look at. Um, do we have a kind of a bit more zoomed out view? There, okay, that one. Yes. So your SM City on the right, Radisson Blue up there. And yeah, um, I think the only sort of con to having, or like a few of the cons having a parametric roof is like, um, did you consider like where the water will go when it rains? Like uh, how the roof will disperse water? Oh, oh well, ideally, I think that um, there should be like pipes mm. on the sides, and that connects uh to the to the yeah like maybe like maybe like a pipe hole here that kind of connects down below. So I think like with the steel trusses, like with the pipe, I think it would like uh, blend in like maybe just kind of have the pipes similar color with the mm. steel. So ideally, like, yeah, maybe like a few, like since parametric mancha, maybe like a few on the sides, like a, like a pipe. Mm. Alternatively, like you can have the pipes with the supports. So the bang support mm. is like spreading out like web members. So maybe mm. together with the web members, you can put some pipes there. Uh -huh. And then they uh, just send some consideration like, like for your future design classes. The pipes need to be located where the roof is kind of sort of uh, sloping down. So it won't usually be at the, for this particular shape, uh, I'll just snip it now. Um, can you show me the blow up of the roof? The next slide. Ah, there. Ah, okay, I think this is better. I'm gonna share my screen. So these are more comments than critiques. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Like for example here, so this is the lower part of the roof. Let me just change to red pen. So the pipe would be here. The pipe would be maybe somewhere here. So these are the lower parts or like the basically the downward sloping parts. So you can't have it, uh, for example, you can't have it here because it's, um, I think it's opening up like that. Anyway, for any part that moves like this, so you don't want to put your pipe there because the water is not flowing there. It's flowing down here. So you, this is where you would locate your pipe. This is the only challenge with roofs like this. I think even um, some architects wouldn't put the sort of drainage anymore. And then they would just like make sure that the drainage here is, a, is even more efficient to catch the water run up here. So uh, in your case, I think the um, the reason for putting the roof there is really to create some kind of landmark or visual um, flair for the otherwise empty lot. So I think that's a good justification. Um, just be prepared for those kinds of questions when you go to like higher years. Um, other things to note here, let's see. Not much else. We pretty much described everything before in previous presentations. And then I really want to highlight or like or appreciate that you use color schemes based on the surrounding buildings. And I think that's a very easy way to sort of unify your site with the surrounding area. Can you show that slide? Oh. There. This is something that um none of my teachers back in my day pointed out that we could do this or like, or suggest that we do this. And just based on my experience, I think it will help um, just create better designs in an area because this is really what I feel is lacking um, in Cebu. 
And when you go to your like uh, next teacher's next fourth year, fifth year, each teacher will have their own sort of idea of what is good design. And you will have to be flexible and sort of, um, I guess, with that, for lack of a better term, cater to their needs. <laughs> so it'll be similar to a like client situation where they want something a bit, I wouldn't say unreasonable, but not not uh, orthodox or out of the ordinary. So you, as uh, future architects and designers, you have to be flexible and like be open to uh, suggestions. So I very much appreciate this. Even though I didn't suggest it, uh, you just went ahead and like uh, considered the uh, local uh, local context of surrounding building. So this is very much appreciated. Um, that's pretty much it. I guess some other issues would be the um, this curving structure in the facade. I guess mm -hmm. to mirror the curving structure of the roof. Uh, you will also be grilled on that um, in higher years. Like, what is the is this structural or is it purely uh, decorative, something like that? Actually, like my idea, sir, is like kind of just decorative. And then like, as you can see, like here at the edges, it can actually act as like a seating area. Mm. Like here. Yeah, you can say it also provides shading. <laughs> any kind of uh, any kind of added benefits is very important for this kind of, um, and I would say more abstract, not really abstract, more organic looking designs. Uh, you want to go for more dynamic shapes, so you really have to justify why you would go that far. And, you, and for this particular project, you can say because the project is very, uh, the project site is very bare. There's no landmarks. There's nothing memorable. The, I guess the landmark is SM City, but SM City itself isn't really architecturally sort of significant. It's just a box. So you could say now, to create interest in the site, you go for more uh, dynamic forms. Uh, I think we discussed that several times uh, this month. So uh, this is just for everyone who would like to go for more uh, dynamic designs, but um, you have to convince your teacher. So you're going to say, in a, we want to create a landmark. We want to create something memorable. And then you also need to provide kind of just uh, some structural, um, what they call this, drawings to, to prove that you understand how to build the thing. Overall, again, another great work. Uh, thank you so much, Vanessa. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Um, Ong Christian. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'll, I'll present my screen, sir. Sige. Um, present. Oh, wait. Uh, Siaya, retype something. Christine Po. Uh, I'm just asking, there's a message here to chat. Oh, yeah, Christine Poe, the one with the parametric roof. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the chat. Uh, yes, I can see your screen. Uh, you may start. Okay, so you have 10 minutes. So, so, good day, everyone. I'll be presenting my design, Katana Waypoint Terminal, a proposed two-story bus terminal. Sorry. Uh, so, for my concept, Katana means connected or linked chain, while Waypoint is somewhat similar to that of a direction. So as a whole, it is like a connected direction terminal. <laughs> the concept is further explained and shown with the uh, different features of the terminal, such as the V and the triangular uh, facades, which will be shown later, and also the park. And um, my form finding is based on the proposed placement of main general spaces of the building, the building footprint, the arrival and departure areas which is then developed by other spaces such as landscaping, greeneries, and parks as shown on the design. So my design focuses on accessibility, space maximization, and safety. So I wanted to make the building accessible by providing separate entrances for the pedestrian and vehicular uh, as shown here, uh, as shown here um, the user entrance and the vehicular entrance to, uh, to mitigate or prevent accidents. Hmm. Hi, Christian. Uh, sorry, could you say which color the vehicle entrance and which color the pedestrian entrance is? Uh, the the, the vehicle, vehicular entrances is this one, sir. Uh, the red the red arrows as shown here is a legend is the taxi and then the sa blue kai, the private vehicles. And then the entrances uh, uh, passengers is here. 
which is in um, brown arrows, and then the employees are here on the other side. Um, so, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I also placed. Oh, sorry. I wasn't okay. I also placed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I also placed the um, my park before the building entrance since I want the park to be utilized even if the terminal is closed. So, in par with the flexibility of the entrances. The park can also be utilized as a space for them to stay, especially for the people who just arrived from their travels. Um, so the site dev shows the top view of my bus terminal, as you can see. The main spaces I mentioned a while ago, the building footprint, this one, the arrival base, uh, arrival bay and the uh, departure areas, which is shown here. And also the future development areas and the park which is this one and it also shows the entrances of both the pedestrian and vehicles uh, next is my site analysis oh sorry my site analysis so the design had sacrifices in terms of the windrows diagram due to its orientation and its priority of the entrance spaces uh, on the SM city area uh, but then um, this, uh, uh, this is uh, compensated for the, the arrival and departure areas where these spaces can possibly be um, active on peak days. So based on the sun path analysis, less louvers and facade will be shown here in this area and more, oh, more on the entrance areas here and here, which will be shown later sa elevations. Next is my traffic analysis. So every vehicular paths follow a one-way system. So one entrance and one exit for the um, for the vehicles and the buses also here. One-way system lang siya. And um, the pedestrian ent entrances are also flexible. So there's um, a pedestrian entrance here. And then you can also and they can also enter from here. I forgot to put the entrances. There's an entrance here, sir, for drop off and and the exit is uh, the exit for uh, the building can also be here or padirasa there is a pedestrian entrance. Next is the floor plans. So in terms of zoning, as much as possible, I placed my employee areas close to each other these are it's located here and um this is to prevent disruption of uh, circulation between passengers and employees and i also have a huge lobby to accommodate a lot of people especially on peak days where a lot of people would really utilize the terminal then a lobby lounge is also present to for people who who wants to stay and wait so and then um, there's an indoor garden here to uh, to implement uh, to improve um, user experience. Then that also has a skylight that promotes natural light ventilation for both the garden and the people. Next are my arrival and departure base shown on the plan. So this is the departure, and then this one is the arrival. So. Um, it has a parallel parking arrangement. So the bus, once it enters from here, goes to the arrival here to unload, and then it will go here to the departure areas to uh, load. And then after loading, they will just go exit. And then um, bus areas are measured at uh, 5 by 13 meters. The, parking slots uh, by 3.3 meters and then uh, departure base here have kiosks um, in case if they want to buy something on the go it also has um, uh, comfort rooms and the waiting area is also so outside so my second floor shows the canteen which is this one the public canteen so I place the canteen on the second floor since this is a somewhat public to semi-public space wherein people will stay and eat. So because the canteen is both for employees and passengers, I wanted to 
put the canteen in a way that it can be directly accessible to the employees as well. So as you can see, there's a um, there's a stairs here. This is for employees only, so they can uh, they can just go directly to the canteen. Wait, I'm um, sorry, sir. Oh, the ground that's a yeah. ground floor to the um, stairs. Yeah, going to the second floor. And then, um, then as I open to below here, sir, as shown, to increase the ceiling height. So next are my elevations. So floor to ceiling heights for the ground floor is uh, 3.2 meters, while 2.9 for the second floor. I wanted to have a high ceiling so that it won't look suffocating. And based on interior experiences, high ceilings make the space bigger than 2.9 meters for the second floor even though I was I was going for a um, mezzanine type but then since um, I realized that the canteen is a public to as a public to semi-public space so I considered uh, user experience and comfortability then we can also see the design features of the building here such as the triangular facades which is based on uh, the concept Unfortunate, uh, unfortunately, wala, uh, wala nakitan ang circles. Like it's a, it's a perforated metal sheet na material, sir. This one, mga kani. Wala nakitan sa because it's too small. <laughs> wala siya Next time you can put a blow up there, especially since you have all that space on this page. Ah, okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, bitaw. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Um, then, so next are the sections. So this show additional uh, the spaces and the uh, open to below here and uh, here. The open to below space is here. Then the public canteen is here. And yeah, the departure areas, the concession spaces and the like. The next are the mechanical plants, the plumbing layout, the lighting layout, which uses uh, LED lights for that's it for uh, since it has a sustainable feature in um, in lighting materials and then the 3d structural uh, layout which has call outs of the concrete footings the columns and then lastly the perspectives so this is the perspective of the entrances this one is uh, um, the main entrance main pedestrian entrance and then this one is uh, my uh, drop off areas which directly shows the park then the man's eye view then we have the park this, this is the proposed development area the park then it also shows the the concept of the building now. like it shows direction also and then next is the interior designs the entrance lobbies the public canteen the lobby lounge the arrival and departure base and then uh, the in indoor garden with the skylights then lastly the aerial perspective that's all sir thank you okay good just within the time yes, sir. so i'm trying to uh review your slides here again okay sir. um i think you mentioned it earlier from ragna i was answer answering a message what was the inspiration for your external uh, exterior facade, the sort of like triangular pattern? And the perforated, this one, sir, this mm -hmm. one. Um, I, I, um, I, I, it is inspired by the, kanang, it's inspired by the concept of kanang, an arrow, gani, sir, which also mm -hmm. uh, sends us kanang direction. And then I was, I was also looking into uh, the, Vinta na design sir like it it has it, Vinta is like a boat that has a kanang uh, that has a like triangular pattern sir so I wanted to relate it since it's kanang Filipino style ah okay okay could you show it on the screen the Vinta boat Vinta boat okay sir yeah ah okay uh, I would share my screen from I don't I don't want to like load and then make it close again. <laughs> Like this, sir. More shagging, Annie, sir. Yes, okay. So uh, go back to the elevation. Because on the triangulars and right. ang 
the mm-hmm. color scheme sir kay may base run ako siya sa ihang surrounding buildings sir that's why like uh, it looked kind of ro- yeah in the brown See. yeah okay, do you have a like ar- aerial perspective or exterior perspective lang the aerial perspective is here okay Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can see it a bit on the two-story building on the right. Yes. And then uh, more on the supports or the arcade on the left. Mm. Yes. Mm. So are those like V columns sort of structural or are they decorative? Um, I was gonna think of kind of structural and that sir, structural supports, but then I'm not I'm not entirely sure about the column footing sir if like he apply to ba siya sa v na column hmm. sa na, na siya column footing yeah so that's just something to consider can i see your structural drawings again wait lang sir na na sir the, wala na paro ang v niya sir and then yeah na sa di ago my friend i can see it on the other end uh, yes. on the image in the lower right yes sir. it's there oh, okay and then you're also putting a structural for the roof the crossing uh yes sir yes oh okay right, sorry sir uh, okay no problem you don't need to close your screen uh you can just uh pin me over here where's the thing uh, here. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. so this is what i was asking about oh yes sir yeah okay so nanisha <clears throat> Is there spaces above this? Can I'm on second floor na? No, sir. Just just the roof lang, sir. That's like the connected. That's like the covered pathway, sir, towards the yeah. departure area. Okay, so if just if it's just a roof, you don't need it. To, you don't need it to connect with the main structure. It can just be a separate thing that you don't need to show because it's not uh, okay, sir. load bearing without. Yes, so sir. Yes, sir. Here. Okay, sir. So it's more kanang just its own thing so if you go back to your perspective yes, uh which perspective sir? uh kanang area na makita to siya na roof. yeah yeah you don't have to connect it to the existing structure yeah this I think part you also sir. made it higher no yeah i made it a bit higher sir okay mm. um i have an elevated walkway in this area sir as you can see ah, para musaka ang bus. Okay. yeah musaka ang bus niya para dili masang <laughs> okay good so and finally, um, just one more comment here. Uh, if you go to your site dev, site development, okay, sir. Mm-hmm. There. Okay. Um, is there a? Oh wait, maybe ground floor plan na. Okay, na na Okay, sir. There. Kena, okay, so zoom in a bit sa mong bus na pathway or bus na um, road. How okay, wide sir. is that kanang bus parking uh, road ex? Um, twenty meet about twenty meters, sir. Okay, so it's a bit bigger yeah. than required. Yes, sir. So you could say na <clears throat> it will be for future expansion. For so, Jeff, if it's in the middle of the road, so yes, more na siya, that will be a issue uh, okay. for the grade. Pero it's minor lang. Okay. Sir. Um, I also based it sa kadong minimum ko answer nga ten meters kay sixty uh sixty degrees na atanish. I thirty degrees. 60 uh, kind of depending on where you measure it from it could be 60 it could be 30 for i think for this type of parking you would you would need more backing space because it's almost yes, 90 sir. now yes sir so, yeah around 60 least from. yeah so i think it would make sense it would be more sugar mga 16 to yes sir 16. so on both ends but i think yeah um <clears throat> excuse me I think it's 16 for both na, na both parking above. I need to like draw this. Okay, sir. I'll wait. Okay, I'm going to share the okay. screen. Okay. Yeah, so can you share my 16 here? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think they can share the 16. Like you could move this um, down oh. here. Ah, they can share the 16 meters, sir. Okay. I thought yeah, it's like 16 usually, meters per side. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can also say this will be like extra maneuverability. For it's really not yeah. you know, um, a maximized or not really an efficient use of space. So uh, okay, sir. You know, for next time, 16. The same thing also happens for 
um, vehicle, like just normal car parking, ni Google ni mo, when they put the number here, that's usually for both. We double ah. check when it's a ilang drawing or silang mga references. So, ah, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, the interior space makes sense. And is this an indoor park here? Uh, indoor, it's an indoor garden, sir. Wait, uh, indoor garden there, sir. Yeah. One is just someone as okay. Yeah. Sige, I think kana lang. Oh, we went a bit over time again. Okay, sir. So, oh, excuse me. Oh no, we're actually under time. That's good. Okay. Next, we have uh, you. Thank you sir. No problem. I have a bit more notes. Uh, hi, hi, sir. Uh, sir, can I have mm. background music, sir? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll share my screen. Sige, background music for your discussion. Yes, yeah, sir. Para char. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jan, hit it. <laughs> okay, so good morning, everyone. I am Nasli, and I am here today to present my proposal for the Cebu North Bus Terminal. So. I have a question for you guys. Are you tired of terminals designed just for the buses? Well, I am. <laughs> so for this proposed bus terminal, I made sure to focus on maximizing the space and adding as much activities for the people, making the bus terminal more people-centric as well as economic and sustainable. <laughs> okay, so the main design concepts. For the bus terminal, include inclusivity, wayfinding, inner city revitalization, and sustainability, safety and economy, and as well as the integration of these concepts are better understood once I show you the plans and perspectives. So look out for these symbols right here. So okay, yeah, that's all for the background. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> okay, so to the technical stuff. Okay, so the buses enter. So we have our site development right here. Okay, so the buses enter no, from the... Yeah, that's it, sir. It's just for kanang effort. <laughs> okay. Sige, go. Okay, so the buses enter from the 30-meter national road since this follows the road's main flow, which makes it more convenient for bus drivers. And the buses exit to the 20-meter Kaohsiung road since these buses are northbound. And it shortens the travel time as well because it kind of is... um. It makes the travel time longer if they exit through the 30-meter national road just because they have to go all the way around. And we have the drop-off area right here. So the drop-off area follows the main circulation that is present in SM. -na. And plus, that is where the main entrance is for both pedestrians as, uh, as well. Yeah. So next, we have the street lamp posts. So you can see them right here, the little dots, which um, you'll see in the perspective right after. <laughs> And the guard houses are on the bus entrance and exits. So there's one right here and another one right here. So um, the bus, uh, sorry, the guard houses are positioned that way, sir. Because I don't know if you remember, sir, but last time we talked about the security issue due to the like um, big openings because of the plaza. So to combat mm -hmm. that, I transferred the guard house closer to the plaza. So from here, I transferred it here just so um, they can get um, a better view of the plaza, as well as the vegetation as well was lessened, just so Good. look at that rock. Yeah, okay, that is it for this. Oh, uh, another thing, the traffic light. So as you can see from this perspective right here, um, I added a traffic light near the pedestrian just for safety purposes. But naturally, the buses, guy, they will slow down when they make a 90 degree um, curve. Okay, so next let's talk about the bus information system and traffic analysis for the pedestrians. So I just combined it, now, sir. Okay, so the pedestrians mainly enter from the SM side and upon entry, they find themselves in the foyer, which leads them to the information, uh, sorry, information center, the e-ticketing area or the cashier, as well as the ATM, so whichever they need. So that's the first um, thing that they'll see. And after obtaining a ticket, the users can either go to the left or right wing, guided by the mounted monitors and hanging signages as seen in the perspective in the next slide. So these um, yellow streaks right here are mounted monitors to show the schedule and um, time as well. 
And these blue streaks are the hanging station signs. So let's say you're gonna go to uh, Bantayan, Hagnaya, Lampusan, or Tuburan. So you're bound to go to the uh, right wing. Sorry, right wing. So if you're going to Tabugon, uh, Danao, Maya, Via Bagay, Di Bantayan, Via Kawit, you go to left wing. So after you obtain your tickets and go to your respective wings, you can choose to go to the second floor or the roof deck. So this is how it looks like from the main entrance from SM. So as you can see right here, we have the information center, administration office, e-ticketing, and the cashiers. And we have the hanging station signs here as well, drinking station and ATM. We also have metal detectors just for safety purposes, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the interior perspective for the waiting area for the left and right wing. So it's quite similar lang. You can see the tactile tiles and the bollard poles used, as well as the retail spaces on the left side and the mounted monitors. Okay, so bus information. Okay, so this is the um, bus information system for the second floor. So again, we have mounted monitors for the second floor just to keep people on time. <laughs> and so here we have a perspective of the second floor open space and the third floor roof deck. So I made use of the roof deck there just to fully maximize the space. And yeah, mm -hmm. so there are great views as well. So here's the interior perspective of the second floor cafeteria. So this is right here, sir. So you can see there are mounted monitors. And just to fully reinforce um, ventilation, I added ceiling fans as well to improve ventilation. OK, so site analysis. So the building is positioned to receive more morning sun and less after sun. By doing this, the waiting area receives less heat. So as you can see, um, this is the morning sun. So it hits the inside area, which is where um, it's open and where the waiting area is actually uh, located. Yes, sir. And yeah, uh, that is it. Oh, also, applying an L shape also enables more passive cooling, which we'll see in the next slide. This also welcomes air from both the southwest and northeast, which helps fully ventilate the building. So the building is open, sir. Um, I don't uh, remember. I don't know if you remember, sir. But from last time, I actually chose to close them. But right now, all the retail spaces are open spaces. On the second floor? Uh, yes, sir. And first floor. Oh, okay. Both first mm -mm. So the only air-conditioned spaces are the administrative areas. So as you can see in this uh, section, okay, we have air from southwest entering the building right here and exiting the building right here, entering it here and exiting the building right here because it's all open as well. So mm -hmm. we have air from northeast entering here and exiting this area entering here and exiting this area so passive cooling so the reason why it enters from um this here so the right is because it's actually opened here and here yeah and yeah so this is an aerial view of the building with the roof deck mm -hmm. and solar panels so next we have the exterior perspective again. So here's another ex exterior perspective showing the plaza and the lampposts. So the plaza is important for inner city revitalization since if you look at the current area surrounding this lot, there is not much accessible green spaces. So a plaza was included to invite people to the outdoors. Okay, so next we have the ground floor. So here we have the ground floor, plan, the ground floor plan and blow up plan. So through this view, the visible implemented concepts are inclusivity and economy. So inclusivity can be seen in the integration of the ramps and tactile tiles. And the economic concept can be seen in how the space was maximized and the addition of 24 retail spaces on both wings. So some, uh, we have um, 13 right here and 11 retail spaces right here. Yes. So next we have the ground floor blow up plan. So here, sir, you can see that, um, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. So similarly to the second blow up, we can see that um, their uh, inclusivity and economy was also integrated. And in this view, we can see the staff area, which was put on the ground floor for more convenience right there here so next we have the administrative spaces which are um, put in the middle for passengers to easily see and access upon entry and exit okay so second floor 
So for the second floor, we have we uh, it is purely used for passengers with the interior cafeterias and retail spaces as well as the open green spaces, which can be used for alfresco dining, present on each wing as seen in the perspective on the next slide. So this is the alfresco dining area outside, and as you can see, there are stairs here leading to the roof deck. Yes. Okay, so second floor, base plan two. So uh, we can see the implementation of inclusivity, economy, and sustainability for, the, um, for, the, for this plan, as you can see mm -hmm. here, sir. Okay, next we have the roof floor plan. So uh, for the roof deck, it was integrated, uh, integrated again to maximize the area for human-centric activity. So for this space, people can just enjoy the view, relax, and walk around. And you can also see the solar panels and vegetation, which satisfies the sustainability concept. So here's a perspective of the roof deck. Okay, so our front elevation and rear elevation. So from this view, you can see the opening on the left um, of the rear elevation and the open spaces on the second floor. Uh, the right elevation and left elevation. Next, we have the longitudinal sections and the cross sections. And okay, we have the electrical plan. So I used a 24 watts lead fluorescent tube and 11 watts lead pin lights. So here we have them all connected to the electrical room here. This is where the electrical room is. So I uh, while making the plan circle, I, I was really worried that you couldn't see the little details. So I had to make a lot of the plan sir. Um, okay, but yeah. you can see the guide uh, for the key plan on the upper right for all of them. So the electrical plan for the second floor. Okay, so let's talk about the HVAC. So the only air conditioned spaces are the administrative area. So the admin office, passenger information center, as well as the cashier, uh, public relations office, security office. So they are all beside each other and also are in the middle. So. It wasn't um, super um, hard to position the ACCUs, so I used a split type aircon and I put the ACCUs or um, external units um, under the staircases on both sides. So these ACCU units are hidden under, uh, hidden through louvers, as seen in the next slide. So yeah, sir. So I just added um, louvers right here to hide the ACCUs under the stairs. Mm -hmm. But the ACCUs aren't modeled, no. Ah, uh, no, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's just there, sir. Super hidden. <laughs> so sorry about that, sir. Yeah, okay, okay. I don't think you, it, even the, they would require you in fifth year to do that. I hope not. <laughs> okay, so next we have the plumbing plan. So here's the um, sectional details for the water supplies. Um, so my toilets, sir, they aren't um, superimposed since um, it is, uh, my design is quite um, tapering in form. So I had to give each like a sectional detail and how it connects to the water tank and cistern. And here we have the sanitary. So the same concept as well. So sectional details as well. And we have the guide on the upper right, just in case. Oops. Uh, next we have the structural isometric. So I used 600 diameter reinforced concrete columns, four by eight reinforced concrete beams, 300 mm thick elevator shaft, and six by six reinforced concrete columns. So I had uh, circular columns and rectangular columns as well. And for my footing circ, I had a three meter by three meter by 500 mm concrete footing. Yeah. And that is also a bus terminal for the people. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that is all. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm just like coordinating for Safa Design Week. Oh yeah, just an announcement. <laughs> we have Safa Design Week next week. Oh. It would be great if you could attend. For I'm sure na maluya po na Anyway, so um, we already discussed this design at length, um, like even before pa. The one thing that really stands out to me now um, is the roof eaves. So if you go through like a section or an elevation, can we check how much roof overhang you have?
for the uh, ground floor and the second floor? Uh, section, sir? Right. Uh, I think section will be good, yeah. Let's try looking okay. at the section. Okay, so this one is like direct, even the cross section looks the same. Let's look at the elevation. Okay, so <laughs> any other elevations? Oh, I just right and rear. Uh, left and right. Uh, okay, so I'll just share my screen and that. So what I'm trying to measure or show, let's just make a new one here. Uh, I can't make a new one. I'll just do paint. So your building is essentially, the structure is a box. Well, I want to know how much the those patterns are overhanging from the edge of your wall, like this distance here. Okay, your oh, building okay. is like this, and then the pattern goes like that. Mm -hmm. So how much is that overhang there? Around 300 mm, um, sir. 300 mm? Uh, no? Yeah, sir. Okay, so that's uh, that might be an issue because mm -hmm. um, tropical climate, choo choo choo. So the sun needs, or the sun will angle into your space. If it's just 300 mm, so it'll probably look more like that. It's meaning your sun, because we're in the tropics, we really go into your space, like either on one side or the other side. So the interior space will become very hot. So this oh, I think um, is, hmm? so sorry, sir. Uh, for the first floor, sir, it's around three meters to three point five. Sir. But for the second floor, it's yeah, three hundred mm. Okay, so this one is three. So three yeah, is fine. Okay, okay. So I think it would be shaded, and the second floor would be. I think you would also need some kind of extension here. Um, it will increase sort of maybe the. I think either do you want it to be more emphasized this shape here. Ah, yes, yeah, sir. I tried to focus on keeping the um, overall form uniform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think having the extension to the roof eaves here will also make the form here even better. So um, I think you mentioned it earlier, Simon Design. Uh, what is the inspiration for this um, sort of design? <laughs> for the form, sir? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just to make the uh, hardware experience not much of an abstraction within the site, sir. And if you've noticed, it's just white and green. That's because there's not much of an urban design character in the area. Mm -hmm. So I focused on just adding as much vegetation and making it for the people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they can basically go everywhere they want in the bus through and all. So. And yeah, okay. so that's it. CG. So one Asha. Um, so, oof. so this one, yeah, this one looks good here, but maybe a, a bit more overhang here would have helped. And I think it would make the pattern stand out too. Thank you. And yeah, I you. would also like to uh, thank you for adding a bit more energy into our <laughs> That's very much appreciated. So for those who will be presenting on Friday, okay, good guy, then you'll uh, try to get a bit creative don't worry don't like uh worry about being too formal you can have fun with it okay final no good uh what other things here yeah i think this is the thing that like, really stood out to me let's look at your site analysis um let's see so this is pretty much yep straightforward one entrance one exit and the pattern is seen here on the sort of park and i think because probably deadline well and i kind of develop simong park here like no like plants or whatever choo 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 oh uh, yeah sir um but i was also um i didn't put a lot because i thought that if it was to be used for which i didn't have time to develop again mm. if, move, if it would be used for let's say some bomercada or like temporary fairs because they can just yeah. add their stalls right there on the spot yeah <laughs> so Mona, um what do you call this you can have ideas here at the very least like show images of what you want to put here and i uh, I think that'd be a quick sort of um, way to show renderings or show what your idea is without actually modeling it. So maybe that's just like a, <clears throat> what I would do if I was in your position. I don't have time anymore to model this thing. I'll just like show an image. Like you put a call out here, an arrow, and then you put like a big picture here. I think it's similar to what other students were doing. So oh, yeah. that should have been applied here. And 
Can you see a um, uh, shrubbery here or like a uh, roof vegetation? Mm -hmm. It looks good in plan, but if you notice, if you go to your, uh, which perspective has the roof? Um, the one showing the plaza, I think so. Okay, uh, which page number is that? Uh, <laughs> uh, is it okay if I uh, show here. it? Okay. Oh, no, it's okay, I found it. Okay, sir. Yeah. It looks good from an aerial view, especially here in the bigger ones, but here in the roof, because it's smaller on your kind roof plan, the curve wouldn't register as much. Like for example, you see your roof, right? And you have like plants going this way. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, and then in elevation, it will just look like flat. <laughs> so instead of like putting yourself to the trouble like making it curve, just like make it the straight. And uh, it will also like okay. enhance the the visual quality of your roof that you have like a row of uh, shrubbery or plants that are going in one direction okay when you do it like the small curves it just ends up looking like a short rectangle like when you're walking <laughs> through it like man's eye bit up oh yes sir yeah, okay. those are just very small nitpicks the planning overall no problem um let me check our schedule here so we're so to 11 20. okay i can comment a bit more site development perspective okay. oh wait it's ground floor plan so again uh really a benefit to planning bus terminals they're not really complex on the inside so just make sure to have all your spaces like repeating spaces are fine and then um is there a reason i don't put all this uh, sir, it wouldn't fit the page, <laughs> so I have to blow up plans. Oh, there are two. Page. Yeah, sir. It's okay. on the um, uh, page before this, sir. Um, it's like a blow up plan. Okay, blow up plan over here so that you divided it into wings. Yeah. Okay, okay. I see it. Okay, good. Let's see. Do, do, do. Straightforward entrance is here. Na, na, na. Bus entrance is there. Yep, and then how much is uh, this again? The here to here. Oh, 10 meters, sir. Um, I right. remember, sir, that you said not to, uh, to just leave around 4, but I was really worried that it would cause a lot of safety issues. So I mm. had to increase it to around 8. Okay. So the buses, you didn't draw the buses, no? Uh, no, sir. Yeah, I think if you drew the buses, it wouldn't look so big. Uh, but I think that's fine. 8 meters is fine. Minimum na gitong 4, like for really kind of um conserving space so if you draw the bus says i think it wouldn't look so empty without okay i think that'll be fine what other else here not much for future expansion okay now okay i think we can uh thank you for your presentation again <laughs> very much appreciated uh livening things up a bit and uh if anyone wants to do that on friday uh, please go ahead okay thank, thank you, you sir. let's move on to the next one um, two more for today. Uh, Galleon J. Uh, yes, sir. Sige, go ahead. Mga oh. 10 seconds, sir. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Hello, Jay, next share. Oh, all right, it's going. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, so, you go ahead. so here yeah, is my bus minutes. terminal design. So my uh, concept are first, the pedestrian and vehicle circulation are separated, meaning that vehicle areas are exclusive to themselves and the same for pedestrians. Next is the building can be appreciated on all sides because of the abundant setbacks and for sustainability uh, i have clear stories for nat natural light ventilation and that also functions as passive cooling and the building orientation makes the park shaded from the afternoon sun this one sir so here is my site analysis on solar study so in summer the morning sun rises in uh sergio osmenia and kaohsiung and in the afternoon uh Canopies and shades are applied on the south side. And for winter, the morning, uh, it is the same as above. 
but in the afternoon the park is shaded here in the Kaohsiung side. So my traffic analysis, my pedestrian circulation is unobstructed from vehicles, so meaning uh, pedestrian circulation kay kani ang green areas as well as the sidewalks here in the building and by vehicle circulation kay exclusive the Dirina side. And also my building is accessible to for pedestrians on all sides sa site. So uh sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sa floor plan sir kay I separated the spaces for the bus drivers here in the outside. Kaubandiri ang mga garage areas, generators, kan mga noisy areas, and as well as their toilets. And for the users, na sila diri sa uh, main building. And uh, in this orientation, sir, my concession spaces are located on this side because this is uh, adjacent to the SM uh, parking. And money pinakadaghan na pedestrians mang labay so nasila diri and diri ang sa left side ang mga ticketing offices and private spaces so sa second floor um ang kaning ubos na yellow shaded areas money accessible for uh, customers and located here are the concession and restaurants but in this top area are the private spaces which is exclusive for the uh, staff. So, so ang mga offices, ilang canteen, and ilang CR. So here is my front elevation. This is on the park side. This one faces on SM parking. And this is my rear elevation adjacent sa bus parking. My right elevation facing Radisson Blue. And by left elevation facing Kaohsiung Street. So here is my longitudinal section and my cross section. So my electrical plan, ground floor and second floor on the right. My uh, air conditioning layout. So ang mga rooms na nai condition sir kay mostly ang mga concession spaces and offices but kaning mga waiting areas kay wala na kay i applied uh, natural air and light ventilation same as same for the second floor my plumbing system money ang uh, cr also here my structural system Mm -hmm. And my perspective exterior, aerial view, uh, interior. Uh, that's it, sir. Okay. Sige. Um, let's see. Let's go to your uh, site, Dev. Actually, I'll just share my screen lang. Mo close screen na ko, sir. Uh, uh, okay, dapat there. Mo close. So uh, it seems like na na busy ka sa deadline. <laughs> um, the site dev is a bit underdeveloped, especially kanina sides here. Uh, during. So we're lacking uh, development there, but at least ang floor plan is clean and like understandable. And also the road here is exactly the way I would have wanted na Igamaysia. And then my only issue so far, aside from the undeveloped sides of the site, is really canning are really these uh, very tight sort of entry ports. So, for example, over here, uh, I think I'll just I can't zoom in with this image. Kita um, kas kanina area J. Yes, sir. Yeah. So imagine la mga auto bitaw. Uh, they're turning here, and then this car also wants to turn right, so they need a bit more space. Okay, if, it, if it's this tight, usually uh, what will happen is they compete, Bitao. Uh, I want to turn right here, and the, there's a car behind him who wants to go turn here, 
So the solution just reduce na lang yun, this drop off area like that ang siguro. You don't have to make it so pid pid to the one, uh, but especially because this is the bus entry here. So they would need more time to turn. Okay. So boo, 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 ang exterior wala kaya siya na develop. Is this because uh, a laptop problem? Na, na issue with the laptop or what's, what's sir, the computer ka nang mulag siya kung magpalabi ko og details sa rendering. Mm, okay, deadline okay. Yeah. So wanna see ya. Not so much else we can do. So how you will be great is really just based on the planning on the inside and then the elevations I think medyo not up to one sort of I would say uh, third year quality. So I would suggest na uh, one good time of what if dili makaya sa laptop, you really have to upgrade the laptop. Kay Kanisha is like this thing here, this thing here. Uh, yeah, very kanang needs to be developed. Pa. And just sort of like for me to test your uh, design decision making, why did you choose Kanina type na roof? Uh, there is no right or wrong answer, but I just want to know uh, why lang. Kwan sir, kay wala na ako nagdevelop ug kanang mga roof deck, so kibali not accessible na for users ang roof. As mm. same for the staff, then ni decide na lang ko na ingana na roof. Mm -hmm. um, what are the benefits of this kind of roof? Um, I don't know if correct ba sir, but I think kana I think hip roof na and monay ko on typh typhoon resistant compared to other type of kanang roof. Mm -hmm. That is true. Roof. Hip roof is more resistant than flat roof. Uh, what other benefits can you say about the hip roof? Uh, concert wind resistant. Yeah, but that's what we said. The typhoon. Yep. Oh, concert. Kanang. I think cheaper than other types of roof. Hmm. Not so much because you're building more materials here. Okay, on flat roof is just a slab. On um, hip roof, you have to like buy the trusses, install the trusses. So it's not exactly cheaper. I was looking for kanang hip roof really kanang helps uh, manage rainwater. So rainwater will fall off much more easier than a flat roof. So that must less ang chance of leaking, and then you can really harvest more water this way. So you could have your like gutter here and ana. So much more practical for tropical no weather. And then I noticed mubo ray mong roof eaves here. How much is this here? Can you the distance? One sir, one point four meters. One point four. I think that's fine actually. Minimum manasha. But you need to have another one point four here. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is sure my my shaded shadri sa taas. Here, oops, need to make another line. Come on, check. Ah, there we go. Ah, samuka. <laughs> have to draw another line. Okay, there we go. Uh, shaded shadri, so the sun is angled like that. I think even lower. So if you don't have a second roof here on the ground floor, musud yud ang init. So you need to have an extra sort of protection on your ground floor. Okay, so a bit weaker, definitely a bit weaker than our other submission. So um, we will uh, check this. Uh, we might need to have some kind of an follow up activity, specifically Kaimura and Kwang Kwang, we should see. <laughs> so I'll uh, message you on that. Um, I'll tell you, well, don't worry, we'll work this out if uh, um other computer issues, or at least nana she progress. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sige, next. Finally, we have uh, Ciara. Good morning, sir. Morning. <laughs> last for the <day>, sir. <laughs> yep, last for the day. Ako, wala na ginagituyo, ha? Si list randomizer ginag-arrange. Wheel of fortunes. 
<laughs> okay, so good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. So uh, I'll be presenting my uh, North Bus Terminal. So as you can see, this is uh, the view of my bus terminal, which is uh, called Amihanan. So my design objectives are really just um, sustainable design, accessibility and inclusivity, universal design, passenger safety, multimodal, and future expansion. So uh, I just followed the design brief. And the reason why I called um, my building Amihanan is because it means a uh, north in Sabano. <laughs> so I just translated it. And um, I so the form of my building, um, I aim to provide a unique, contemporary, and innovative theme through the use of bronze architectural mesh over here. As you can see, um, it has like a golden glow when the sun uh, when the sun uh, shines upon it, and I also have a semi-organic facade that gives the rectilinear floor plan a more dynamic a more dynamic form, and. My curves are not um, futile. Um, they, they also have a purpose. It's for sun shading, and it's also to lessen the interior heat gain of the structure. So I also wanted to mimic the waves of Cebu City, because I know that Cebu is known for its beautiful beaches and its uh, coastal trading. It has a, a deep history of coastal trading. That's why uh, I decided to make a wave-like pattern, not vertically or like going upwards, but then horizontally. So it also has like a um, dynamic view, like in all sides. So in terms of spatial planning, um, uh, my north bus, my, my north bus terminal is centered on bringing people and nature together. So it promotes connectivity and sustainability. And I'm also focusing more on the functionality of the building. So I'll explain more on it more on my plans later. So these are a table of contents and these are some um, exterior perspectives. So this is the view from Sir Hugo Esmeña Boulevard and then this is from Caution Street. And then this is the aerial view from the SM City Access Road. And here are some more exterior space perspectives. So this is my main plaza or garden and another view of the main plaza. And then I have the playground um, this is the race crossing in the main entrance. And then um, I have a covered departure platform over here. So it covers the people and also part of the buses. And this is how it looks like at nighttime, the departure platform. So when you enter the building, um, my lobby looks like this. So the first thing you see is a passenger information desk. So they're um, welcomed by, by hospitable um, staff. So here is a view of the food court in the second floor. And this is the view of the waiting area on the uh, ground floor. So here's another <laughs> interior perspective of the fresh air viewing deck on the second floor at nighttime. And then this is the fresh air viewing deck um, in the morning or in the afternoon. So here are my ticketing counters and departure waiting area. Uh, secondary entrance hall in the right wing, and then lost and found and e ticketing booths. And other interior perspectives. This is the last one, sir. Um, arrival lobby okay, and and left wing secondary entrance, and then ATM machines, and then another view of the food court, and then second floor waiting area with the skylight, and then food court stalls, and then restroom view. Um, I, I decided to show the restroom because I modeled the people so it's easier to find. And the signages are also, I also have like braille there. So it's um, more accessible for people with visual impairment. So let's go to my floor plan. So uh, here's my site development and site analysis. So for the sun path, um, the longer side is parallel with the, uh, not exactly parallel, but then it's uh, more oriented towards the east and west access so it's more exposed to the northern and southern sides of the building so um the building uh gets uh ample uh, ample or like abundant natural lighting and the water feature over here and here um they also help in cooling down the building especially during uh warm seasons so for the wind flow um it goes to the building. Oh, so sorry, sir. My writing is 
Uh, okay, so for the windshield, it goes <laughs> no here problem. and here. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm so sorry, sir. I used the wrong pen. So unfortunately, um, uh, the wind doesn't uh, uh, flow through the building um, as well as as um, I wanted to because of the orientation of my building. But then, uh, rest assured, uh, the wind still flows through the viewing deck. And for the noise conditions, um, I made sure to put a lot of vegetation uh, throughout the site so they act as buffer for the noise since like, there's noise pollution everywhere in this area. So uh, it doesn't only block the noise, but it also um, but it also provides privacy and safety and also aesthetic. Um, yes. So for the key views, um, the the people can view from can view the site. I mean, can view the cityscape and seascape in all sides. Uh, cityscape in these sides, and then the seascape there. Sorry, sadly. So here is a three D yeah. of my site <laughs> development plan, sir. So as you can see, I have a lot of roofs, and those roofs they look flat, but then they're actually not flat. Uh, they're they're like cable type. So I have like covered walkways and then abundant vegetation. And then I also have a small security guard house with CCTV here. And then um, in this part, I have uh, this um, maintenance house, maintenance house or like staff area. So they have their own designated place. It's not inside this building. So I just made sure to separate it so that they can be closer to the buses. And I also have my water features that can act as detention ponds to prevent flooding and they also provide like a more busy experience like on top on top of the um vegetation that will already um cool down the entire site and um increase like the and increase like the air quality of the space like the the water features will also help will also help them do that and um, my design is PWD and pedestrian friendly because I have lots of raised walkways, as you can see here. And I also have curb cutouts, which can be seen in the plants later and tactile paving all throughout the site. And my mesh over here is called kind of well steel mesh and it allows air to flow through the viewing deck while protecting them from external conditions. So this is my uh, site development plan of traffic analysis. I'm so sorry, sir. I have so many site development plans. <laughs> uh, so okay, okay, okay. Is, the more, um, the better. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes, yeah, because if I put them all in one slide, um, it's going to be so messy, like the different um, analysis. So for my traffic analysis, um, my buses enter through the 20 meter road because um, even though like uh, one of my classmates said that that the 30 meter road is the last traffic one. I just uh, decided to play it safe and put it in the 20 meter road because uh, 30 meter road like has really um, fast traffic there. So there might be um, more, uh, more chances of collision. So to prevent that, I decided to have it here. So they enter from this point and then they exit here and then they just go to the north here or they can also go here like that. And then for the staff, and then for the staff vehicle path, the green one, uh, they also enter in the same place and then they can just park over here in the staff parking. So there's motor slots and car slots. And then for my private or PUV path, it's the orange line. So it's multimodal um, uh, taxis uh, and other PUJ vehicles. Um, they can just pass by here, drop off, and then go and then go out. So it's a 12 meter road and then um, the private cars can enter here, uh, enter here and then exit here so that they can park in this area. And then for the pedestrian path, um, they enter, uh, the pedestrians can enter through SM or Bayfront or they can even enter here, like through the 30 meter road, but I doubt that a lot of people would pass by here. So I focus more on the 12 meter road and the 20 meter road. So yes, it's really safe for pedestrians because um, there's a lot of uh, sidewalks and open spaces. So here is the site development plan with the ground floor plan. So um, my mini structure, so my guard house over here, and then my maintenance or bus conductor staff area. Oh, and um, I forgot to mention my arrival base and departure base um, are 60 degrees. So I made sure that they had 
um, ample backing space, 12 meters on both sides. Um, because this is the standard in the reference that in, in mm. the reference book that uh, you uploaded, sir, on Facebook, the Indian um, bus terminal guide guideline, because I saw if you mm. use 60 degrees, then it should be 12 meters so that they can have mm. enough backing space. So this is my ground floor plan, sir. So sorry, it reached. I, <laughs> I I took so long just to reach here. <laughs> so um, okay, good. It, for me, <laughs> must my good now. We really like consider everything on the site. Uh, we have a bit of time, so oh, this right, would sir. be um, because I am an urban. I studied urban planning. It really is valuable to me to know how you like utilize the site, and oh, right, um, other teachers might not think about that too much. But it's good that you already learned that here, and you can oh, use right. that. Um, in your uh, next classes and hopefully make practice and good. <laughs> All right, sir. So, sir, uh, this is my ground floor plan. So, a lot of the important spaces of my bus terminal are here, like the ticketing counters, um, the waiting area. So, I have um, an indoor boarding waiting area and then passenger information center. And it's so small, but then I have vending machines in, and info systems. And all of my doors here, they are all sliding doors here, so it really um, helps in uh, moving the traffic uh, a lot faster, the foot traffic a lot faster. And then I also have ATMs, money exchange, lost and found. And then um, and then this upper part here, sir, is just for the staff. So it will also be brought up in the second floor. And then the rest of the space are really for the, um, are really for the users. So I have uh, escalators here at the center and then elevators. And then, uh, yes, we'll just go straight here uh, after they get the tickets. So here and then there. And then they go out there. Or like people who come from here on the left wing, they go to the e-ticketing area and then go straight. So here is my second floor plan, sir. So uh, as you can see, I have like an atrium. And then uh, the reason why I have the atrium, sir, is because like I wanted to make the space like appear bigger, even though it's already um, a very big space, as you can see. And then I also have indoor gardens below. So that's the reason why um, they need like natural daylight. So um, my second floor is... Uh, mostly just like for concession spaces and food carts because um, I wanted to maximize like the the economic uh, viability of the entire sites here since it's very near SM, it's very near Bayfront. So why not just take advantage of it by putting a lot of concession spaces and, you know, to just boost the economy. So um, here I also have like staff spaces. As I said earlier, um, I moved them um, upstairs. So they just like have like that they just um, have like one eighth of the entire building and then I have like drinking stations all throughout and public toilets also as well so it's just the same as the one in the ground floor and then uh, I have a viewing deck so this viewing deck is open air and then uh, I have like seating areas so that um, they can also um, spend their time outdoors yes sir. and then this is my uh, roof deck Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Sarah, just uh, pick up the pace a bit. Try to finish up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. So this is my roof deck. Uh, floor plan. I have overhead water tanks, solar panels, and then air handling units and multi-purpose roof deck. And this is my roof plan. And then um, for my tactile tiles, I just decided to have like separate floor plans. So this is uh, how it looks like with the ground floor plan, uh, with the site development plan, and then ground floor plan. And then second floor plan, and then roof deck floor plan. So these are my elevations here. So front, left side, and then rear, and then right side. And then I have rendered elevations so that you can see the materials properly. So this is the seal mesh, and then um, two is the um, low E glass curtain wall system, and then three is the white painted finish, and then four is the siding glass door, and then five is the glass railings, and then six is the galvanized steel roof with cutter. And I also have uh, solar panels here. I just added it there, sir. And then this is my rear or my right side elevation. So for my sections, um, as you can see, um, I have like skylight roofs, and then 
um, my floor to floor height is 5.2 from the ground to the second and then from the second to the uh, roof deck it's 5.8 so um the ceiling so so the ceiling height in the ground floor plan is four is 4.2 meters and then ceiling height in the second floor is uh, 4.5 so this is my cross section sir so viewing deck main entry and all of the other components of my building so mechanical plan so this is my um air this is my uh, centralized aircon <laughs> centralized aircon plan so unfortunately as much as um i wanted to have like open air i just decided to um, make it air conditioned because i think that site is like quite um mm -hmm. uh, hot sir and also like i didn't exactly like maximize like the wind flow that's why i just decided to make it a uh, centralized aircon so here is how it looks like in a second floor and then this is the connection to the outdoor air handling units and the roof deck plan, sir. And these are my electrical plans. So uh, I have like lots of different kinds of lights. So this is how it looks like in the ground floor. And then mm -hmm. this is the second floor lighting plan, sir. And then lastly, the multi-purpose roof deck plan, sir. So plumbing yeah. diagrams. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is my water supply. So. Um, NCWD and then goes to the cistern and then pumps out to the overhead water tanks and then it goes down to the um, restrooms here and same thing over here sir in the right wing of the uh, building and then for the septic tank so there are two separate septic tanks because the pipe can't run too far from one from Correct. one um, space to another so um, it's really separate here so yes so left and right wing have their own. And then this is my structural diagram, sir. So I'm using like different kinds of columns, I mean, different sizes of columns and beams. So I have three by, uh, 0 0.3 by 0 0.17 meter uh, beams and then 0 0.3 by 0 0.6 um, concrete beams. And then I have a 0 0.3 M thick uh, concrete shear wall. And then I have, um, 1.2 by 0 0.8 meters of uh, concrete columns at the center. And then um, I have smaller, smaller concrete columns, 0 0.6 by 0 0.8. And then I have a uh, diameter 0 0.80 meters around columns at the perimeter of the structure. And then my footings are 2.4 by 2.0 by 0 0.6 meters. And here's another view of my uh, structural diagrams there. So okay. I guess that's well, that's before you go, uh, let's see. Um, what was the determining factor for the sizes of the columns? Why did they change? Oh, because sir, uh, they they differ, Mongod sir, in the load, sir. Um, in mm. the middle, in in the middle, sir, as you can see. Um, I have like I have like an atrium here, and then um, there's not much supporting here. I mean, of course, I have like a sheer wall shear wall at the center but then just to ensure that uh, it is structurally safe i made sure to just um make the columns a bit bigger here in the middle mm, to, so, to accommodate the, yes, the atrium okay good uh, CD. Yes, sir. and then the columns here at the outer part uh, they're not supporting that much spaces that's why i just decided to make it um a bit smaller along also mm -hmm. to save on materials yes okay good good I'll, i just wanted to highlight that um let's see I think we already discussed the uh, planning uh, pretty well. I would just like to talk about uh, tropical design. Can you show your site analysis with the sun path and the wind? Okay, uh, here. Sir. So I'll just snip this. Okay. So this is good for sun. And let me see here. Uh, I was trying to Google which orientation would be best for wind, but I couldn't find any. So let me just share my screen. Get share now. So, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Hi. Sir, I'll stop presenting, sir. Uh, you can just leave it on for now in case I right. uh, need to see something. So the idea behind this is that Eastern, uh, wait, Eastern sun is here and then Western sun is here. So afternoon sun. So why, uh, just to highlight for everyone, 
uh, why is a good why is it a good idea to orient your building like this? Is because the shorter sides uh, here on the east and the west have le have uh, lesser exposure to the sun, like uh, what they call the sunrise and sunset. And why this is weak so wind? Um, I think the theory is or what we believe is that the longer side should be um, following the wind. Uh, let's see here. South west, southwest is here, and northeast is here. So the wind is coming in this way and this way. So the idea is that you shoot nimo imung building if, if it's rectangular to the to the direction of the wind. So it follows through the hallway, something like that. So this is northeast, and this is southwest. But I tried looking for it, and I couldn't find any on like wind. It, uh, the first thing that really comes out is really sun. So this is, I'll share this with you guys. So additional lang Um Site orientation, prioritize rooms that need most natural ventilation and position them, uh, position them to take advantage of prevailing winds. So not much info here on like which is the better orientation. They just mo focus more on the sun. So if you have your longer sides along east and west, that will mean uh the longer sun exposure so this one according to this article and i think a few other uh reference if i remember correctly this one over here is the preferred orientation and this one is the not preferred orientation so sakto si sierra there uh for natural ventilation the most important thing if you see this image here i think there's a bigger image down here the most important thing is to have openings on like a parallel, not really parallel, adjacent end. So for example, in this image, uh, I think uh, Ciara mentioned this as well. And uh, this is more like a comment on tropical design. Okay? I don't think there's any uh, major errors of design in Ciara, <laughs> especially after that uh, very thorough explanation of the site depth. So this is more like additional notes for your fourth year. So if you have a room, let's say this is a bedroom, for you to have passive cooling uh, work, you need to have an opening here and an opening here, like ana siya, or maka, uh, maka flow ang wind or ang, uh, natural ventilation. What will happen if you only have one opening? Uh, let me draw that again, one opening lang. The wind will probably not go in as much and only like probably go something like that. So having another opening will... Uh, like uh, physically move the wind throughout your space. And why they call it cross ventilation, because the best way is to really have openings on four sides. So wind can go here, wind can go there. Um, I'll go open. Uh, can you show me your ground floor, Sierra? All right, sir. So my ground floor is here, sir. Uh, okay. Also, sorry, sir. I'm going to erase my annotations. Ah, okay. <laughs> can you zoom in a bit so we can see your openings? Uh, the windows. All right, sir. So, um, my curtain walls, sir, have like on uh, joke. So, my curtain walls, sir, have like um, on your windows. Uh, it can't really be seen here because of the cutting plane. But then I have mm -hmm. like uh windows here and the toilet, sir, for natural ventilation. Mm -hmm. And yes. So, which one is naturally ventilated? The all of the lobbies. Um, what's naturally ventilated here is like the toilet, sir. Like the whole ground floor is actually um air conditioned, but then in the ah, second okay, okay, floor, okay. sir, um the naturally ventilated part is the viewing deck. So like the entire viewing deck, sir. Like when you go out of the door here, um it's already naturally ventilated, so air can flow. Ah, uh, it's exterior there on the on the roof area. Okay, okay, makes sense the because second. the building wasn't oriented, but for a maximum uh sort of wind uh or natural vent natural ventilations okay da. okay i'll pin myself again let's see here so we'll just go through these like seven strategies um next having um sort of an opening at the top whether it be like an open park as mentioned earlier today or some kind of uh, casement or louver window at the top area of your wall will help uh, cool air flow into your building because it's uh basically 
um, pushing out hot air from that vent or whatever higher louver in a window. Uh, materials, let's see, generally lightweight materials are better for tropical climates. I'm sure that's pretty obvious already. Uh, roof design, again, this is why I mentioned the hip roof. Um, let's see, da -da -da. light colored reflective roof covering materials reduces the amount of heat that passes through. You can also have a double roof system, something like this. And then exterior spaces are such as patios, verandas, and courtyards are beneficial for your home. So the plaza will function as sort of the patio of your bus terminal. So just having that large open space will really help ventilate your building. And then uh, if I just yes. show Ciara's work here. What, hmm? uh, Ciara, could you show your uh, site dev? Uh, hello. The site of um the three D or the announcer. Ah, uh, the plan, plan one. Yeah, there that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Zoom in a bit. Ah, uh, hello, sir. Yep. Sir, am I showing my screen? Yes, you're hello. showing your screen. Let me, let me stop sharing for DK. We got some bandwidth. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. we're here. Am I disconnected? No, uh, you're still there. <laughs> can someone message you? Uh, we can see your screen. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So mm -hmm. notice that the building is kind of, we don't have to occupy the whole lot uh, as, we see, as we saw in previous presentations. Oh, <laughs> and this will really kind of help us with oh, our... Oh. Yeah, well, no, we can see it. We can see it. We can see it. <laughs> internet problems. So that's the advantage of having a big lot. So you have access to natural ventilation. Um, <laughs> and the last two ones here are water and efficiency, which is basically what we did. We have rainwater harvesting, cisterns, etc. So hopefully, you can apply those seven principles and other similar principles in all of your buildings. So this is something that's unique to our setting here is the Philippines. And then if you practice abroad, you will have a different set of principles. But within the sort of countries near the equator, tropical countries, you'll still the same, you'll still apply the same principles only when you go to more nor northern or southern climates, like um, near the poles, like uh, areas with four seasons where your uh, climate principles will change according to wherever you practice. So. I think that's pretty much it. I think the photo is still there. Uh, hello, yeah, sir. I'm I... here, sir. Yes, OK. You can stop hello. sharing us, so and it won't be so heavy with the bandwidth. OK, so overall, uh, good All presentations right. <laughs> from everyone. Um, really no reason for you to not pass. Uh, I think for the most part, this group um, will have some minor um, notes here and there it's, uh, like openings um, road widths uh, orientation to parks etc so overall i think very good work and hopefully i won't see you next year because you'll be in the fourth year class and yeah good luck <laughs> thank you for attending and uh, good job on like your final plates